Welcome to the Heavy Debriefings Podcast. We are Josh Hornquist and the Metal Fairy. A fun-loving metal couple that brings you the best in new music. What did you just make me listen to? As well as movies. Three hours later, nothing of value was added. TV. It's going good, so why not cancel it? Video games. Here's an idea. Remake the game, but make it worse. Wrestling. Why are we still watching this week after week? And all things entertainment. I knew it. I knew she was behind Black Guy Games. And a little insight into our personal lives. You don't mind that I trauma dump on you, do you? Uh, emotional support girlfriend, party one. He's a handsome fella. I know, you keep telling me. We're made for each other, because no one else would have us. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, this is Josh Runquist here for the Heavy to Briefings Podcast, episode 29, mm-hmm. which I will already tell you is called No Chance in Hell, <laughs> and if you really pay attention, you'll understand why it's called that. <laughs> of course, again, I am Josh Runquist, along here with... The Metal Fairy. And how are you holding up today? Oh, I'm okay. It's a kind of a dreary Sunday, but I like that kind of weather, and yeah, I'm excited to do the show. Well, we are a dreary couple. We are a dreary couple. In fact, so dreary. I just woke up about... 20 minutes ago? Oh, not even that. <laughs> like 10, maybe. Yeah, like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this will be a very fun show. A, a jam-packed full of show. Uh, lots of wrestling news. Yes. Lots of music news. Yes. And some stuff that you never would have expected us to ever, ever go back to. It's true. All of that and more. But before we get into that, we gotta yeah. get into how we've been doing this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How, we actually had a, a relatively fun weekend, I would like. We did, we did. Yeah, I mean, we were both kind of suffering sad sacks uh, for different reasons. (laughs) Per usual. Per usual. But um, (laughs) we decided to take our Friday and Saturday and actually have a little fun with it. We did, we did. What did we do Friday? Uh, Well, we'll be talking about that in the gaming section. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. But uh, Saturday, we actually uh, left Mole Man Studios. We did. (laughs) And what did we do? Uh, We we had a little adventure. We went to a couple of our favorite comics comic book stores. Uh, well, let's uh, give them a shout out. Yeah, yeah. Um, we went to uh, Issues Needed in Apple Valley, which I absolutely... Minnesota. Yeah, Apple Valley, Minnesota. I absolutely love that store. Um, and then we also went to... Um, Nerd and Out. Nerd and Out. Thank you. Nerd and Out over in Inver Grove Heights. Another amazing store as well. Um, and uh, you know a store is meant for me when they have a, a single TV playing. A, a good-sized big TV. Yeah. And it's playing The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's going to be a good day for Josh once yeah. we go in there. <laughs> but yeah, we just, it, we kind of, if you haven't heard our previous shows, I think we talked about it a little bit, but uh, last year we kind of started our comic book collections. We've always been into comic books, but never really collected them. Um, and we started doing that last year. And it's been a few months though, since we've been to a comic book store and really uh, did any shopping with it. So we decided to have a little fun day and splurge a little bit. Yeah, it's, well, we both said we wanted to wait for the new issues of, of the Zoltoid, the Omniscient, and Within mm. Temptation. Yep, and Hammer Com- and Well, those comics. Yes. Mm. And all of them are basically to be determined. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you said Hammerfall might have a March release date, but can you even trust changing, that? It keeps changing, though. It keeps yeah. changing, so who knows? Yeah, I think it's the same company for all of them, plus many other bands out there. Oh, yeah, and... it's all of them, because uh, all the issues are $6.66. <laughs> yes, and uh, from what I've heard, there tends... You get it, though, right? Oh, I get it. I get it. Uh, there tends to be a lot of issues with this company um and yeah it doesn't sound very good so we'll see we'll see <laughs> which really sucks because like we've gotten comics from that company we have we and have. they look incredible they do they do i mean it's quality product it's just they don't have um the best track record of putting it out there and getting people what they pay for and blah 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 so, yeah. yeah but we had some fun we did have some fun so what did you pick up i picked up a few different things yeah. uh, one thing i'm particularly proud of is the uh, jane silent bob bundle yeah uh, uh, I got uh, issues one through four of the Jay and Silent Bob collection, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, that that is now my second uh, copies of all those. Nice. <laughs> but I got them for the other comics that come along with that because yes. they weren't in single issues. Yes. Uh, Clerks, the comic book, Clerks Holiday Special, and Oni Double Feature. Oni is the name of the comic book company yeah. that makes those. Uh, Double Feature 1 and 2, which features the very first comic book appearance of Jay and Silent Bob. Very nice. And uh, Clerks, the Lost Scene. Oh. 
Ooh. Uh, also got uh, Spawn issue number 93, which is the first appearance of Urizen, one of uh, Spawn's biggest uh, villains yeah. that he fights off. Yeah. So that, that was pretty cool to pick up. Uh, one very much related to the video game yeah. stuff that uh, we'll talk about later. Uh, Terminator Robocop Kill Human. <laughs> uh, issues 1, 2, and 3. Apparently there is a fourth issue, but okay. I did not see it there. Yeah. So I'll be on the lookout for that one. Exactly. And then, of course, I had to go with uh, favorite ones yes. here as well. With But I also picked up two comics that I didn't know were comics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is the Futurama comics, uh, number two and number eight. Yes. Yeah, I didn't realize that was a comic book series, and it makes all the sense in the world that it would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, Radioactive Man uh, issues number 412 and 679. Nice. Uh, the great thing about the Radioactive Man series is they just pick random numbers for <laughs> the issues. I was going to say, that's a lot of comics for Radioactive <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah, it's just like random ones out of nice. nowhere, like uh, uh, issue number 3000, issue yeah. 66, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is so great. Um, uh, Simpsons Comics and Stories number one, which mm-hmm. was actually the very first Simpsons comic. Yeah. Which uh, I found uh, really cool to be able to pick up. Of yeah. course, uh, Bart Man's on the cover. Exactly. And Simpsons Comics 23, 141, and number one. Mm-hmm. The very first official Simpsons comics. Nice. So I, I picked up both number ones. Very the, cool. The, the precursor to Simpsons comics and the official number one awesome Simpsons vibes. comics. And both <laughs> very, very cheap. Nice. <laughs> so what did you pick up? Yeah, so kind Goth of... Goth girl. I am goth girl. So as you alluded to at the beginning, and so um, Issues Needed, they put together a lot of bundle comics, which is really awesome because especially when you're starting out, like getting comics, like they make it so convenient for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Although I will say it's a little less convenient uh, how uh, everything's kind of stacked now, kind of yeah. like in a tower yeah. kind of thing now. Well, they, I mean, obviously they're with the comic books or they have limited space, so they're definitely trying to utilize their space to the best that they can. But for those of us who can't bend over for that long without our backs hurting, <laughs> Well, it's not convenient. What I was t- trying to say was before they had it like all in one big row. With oh all yeah, the, the bundles. bundles. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. now it's stacked up like uh, the, the single issues, yeah. which I totally understand. But um, yeah. unless you know what you're looking for, going through every single pile yeah. in there, it, it's going to ruin your back. <laughs> it, is, it is. It is. But it's worth it. Um, it. It's true. But along the bundles, I uh, got a big bundle of, I think it was 24 Angel comics, which I, I love Buffy. I watched Buffy back in the did you say Buffy? Buffy? You said Buffy to begin Bo- with. Did I say it weird? Buffy. Call me out on it, huh? <laughs> But no, I, I love Buffy. I didn't watch Buffy when it was originally on, but I watched it after the fact and love it. And I've been collecting some of the Buffy comics. I never actually watched Angel, but I've always wanted to. So this is kind of my motivation to maybe go back, watch Angel, and maybe start getting into the comics now that I have a nice big bundle of them. Now, with the Angel comics, is it kind of like a, a successor, kind of like the Buffy comics were? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I didn't know if you looked into it or no, not No, not yet. yet. Nope, I okay. haven't. I just saw them and it was a great deal. So I'm like, let's do this. Um, Outside of that, I got... A, I didn't write down specific issues, but I got a handful of Fright Nights. I've been collecting those. I love Fright Night. <laughs> Fright Night is just a great 80s cheesy horror movie. Exactly. And uh, I didn't even mind the remake. I know a lot of people did, but I didn't yeah. mind it. But, yeah, um, I didn't either. I think it really works in the comic book form. I agree. I agree. I also found, I didn't know this existed, but I found a Dark Shadows comic and have since discovered that there's a ton of Dark Shadows comics out there. So now I need to be on the search for those as well. Another thing to add to my list, but very excited I found that. Are you ever going to watch that remake movie? Oh, no. It's not a comedy. <laughs> like, gross. It's not the comedy. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not. Um, Outside of that, I'm also a huge, huge, huge Clive Barker fan. I found a couple more Ecto Kids. Um, I also found, I, I didn't look into it yet, but it's like a superhero, like, collection kind of Clive Barker. Um, I also found it Tapping the Vein, but I think I already have that one. So it might be a duplicate. It could be a duplicate. It also could be an alternative cover. It could. It could. Um, <laughs> Not one I usually collect, but... But I just couldn't resist. I found Richie Rich and the New Kids on the Block. <laughs> it's your ultimate crossover. <laughs> it's great. I couldn't resist that. And then outside of comic books, I also got um, The Crow has a couple uh, Funko Pops out now and I grabbed both of those. And I also found a book. It's a little golden book, but it's like, it, it's in, I think it's titled something like Everything I Know I Learned from Little Golden Books. It's uh, one of the people who used to like create little golden books back in the day and she's kind of just put all the lessons you learn like from the little 
little golden books, kind of a uh, combination of every little golden book in this little golden book. It's really cute and I loved them as a kid. So I'm like, I need to get that. It was like $2. <laughs> that, was, that was my score. Yeah, uh, that was really fun. Uh, even just it to was. get out and look at stuff again, because uh, we hadn't done that in a while. We it hadn't done a while, yeah. Uh, what do you call that? Have uh, fun? Fun? In what's, quite a while. fun? I don't know. <laughs> and, well, fun outside uh, Mole Man Studios, yeah, I should say. Yeah, we, we're, we're definitely homebodies. We have fun here and stuff. We do things here, but like, yeah, getting out and doing things isn't as often for us. <laughs> yeah, our, our last excursion was seeing the Iron Claw. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it, it was just nice to get out and do some fun. Exactly. And of course, uh, we did other stuff this weekend, but uh, that'll be coming up in later segments. It will, it will. So, you know, we might as well buckle down and enjoy the news. It's time for the news. Booze, drugs, guns, lies, blackmail, and laughter. With Anchor Woman, the Metal Fairy, and colorless Josh Rumpelist. But look out at the corner of 12th and Main because I'm going to be sick. Yes, everybody, it is time for the news with our news anchor, The Metal Fairy. What did you write down for the news this week? Yes, I just departed my chopper and we have some good news this week. Well, not good, but news. We have news. Well, it is good news in the sense that maybe this will stop. Well, that's a one way of looking at it. Yeah. So... And maybe anyone involved will also no longer uh, be doing the things that they're doing, maybe? That, I, I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Uh... uh <laughs> Freddy foreshadow here to yes. let you know that this is going to be really hard to talk about and not get dropped from YouTube. Yeah. So uh, we're going to have to really, really clean this up if we go into detail. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to leave out a lot of detail, but um, big news, uh, Vince McMahon, who the, the head of WWE for many, 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 many a year. In fact, he created the WWF and WWE. It's true. That is true. Bought it from his father when it was the WWWF. Yes, yes. Then um, it the WWF, then WWE. Uh, he also tried the XFL for a season or two. And, yes. Oof. And many other failed vet. Oh, um, the, the bodybuilding competition one. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I can remember the name, but yeah. The, the ICP, uh, uh, basically steroids, yes. <laughs> weightlifting yep. stuff. Oh, so many, so many grand things he has done. And of um. course, that's a <laughs> very villain-esque uh, mustache that he had for quite a bit of time. <laughs> it is quite creepy. Quite, quite creepy. But yes. Um, he is no longer with WWE as a lot of allegations have come out against him. Um, a very, 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 very inappropriate nature. It's basically him using his power in the company to um do really, really bad things to employees, um, and trafficking and ooh, just a lot of stuff that we can't say the name of. But if you search for this and read about it, oh, you will be as disturbed as us. <laughs> yeah, and it also kind of mentions other people associated with Vince McMahon, a part of all of yes. this. Yes, it specifically mentions um, a few John Laurinaitis, as well as Brock Lesnar. I mean, it doesn't say Brock Lesnar's name, but it says him without saying his name. <laughs> yes, and just to let us know uh, the dirty birdies that we are, we have been sharing memes to each other about <laughs> all of the incidents that have been going on oh, back and forth. Yeah, I mean, I think so many wrestling fans right now. I mean, I think most of us, well, except for the WWE diehards, I think most of us with any sense of kind of reality know that Vince is a terrible person and kind of already always has because there's a lot of like just gross things he's done as part of normal programming. But this this is another, just a whole, whole other level. So I think people are using humor to kind of try to get through it as best as possible. We have to because <laughs> when you really look at it, it's, it's so disturbing. It, it's messed up. Now, it's not just the normal things that would go on about this. Yeah. You know, like, remember when Donald Trump had all of his accusations going on yeah. of a certain particular thing? Yep. Uh, certain particular liquids supposedly, like, to run down his face? Sure, sure. It's that kind of stuff, but even worse. Yeah. Um, um like... It, they're funny how they're both a, a part of the Hall of Fame as well. I know, I know, Trump. right? Right? Like, oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> we won't get into details, but go go look for it. No, it's, no, well, it's shocking, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're also leaving out the big part that he was already ousted from WWE yeah, like and last then, year or and the year came before. Back in. <laughs> yeah. When uh, UFC and WWE uh, converged together mm-hmm. to become TKO Sports. Yes. And then he just found a way to become a chairman. And I'm wondering if he's just got like all these terrible, terrible stories mm-hmm. on everybody and yeah. what they do. I want to put it past him. If you need another way to look at it, think of Jeffrey Epstein kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, That's if a you good don't analogy. know, you don't know. But if you know, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, other things kind of involved with WWE. Um, Raw is going to Netflix, most likely. Um, WWE Network is going to be done by the end of 2024 that I have seen. No, uh, around the world it will be. Okay. Uh, in the United States, I believe it's going till 2025 or 2026. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, starting January, not this year, but next year. Yes. Uh, uh, Raw will be on Netflix. Yes. Um. So that'll be a big change. <laughs> so what do you think about that? Like wrestling being exclusively on a streaming channel? Um. I mean, I think everything is going that way slowly but surely. So it, it makes sense. I mean, there, there are a lot of people who don't <laughs> like we want to go like who don't have cable even anymore and a lot of people who just don't watch tv so it's a huge population that like couldn't watch even if they wanted to so it makes it more accessible to a lot of people and apparently they took a pay cut to be on netflix i saw yeah i mean i i can see that but i can also see like whatever contract they had with cable becoming less profitable in future years so i think in the long haul this could become better for them <laughs> yes i mean if netflix is interested in you yeah and it's just a uh, cable that's interested in you outside of Netflix. You go with mm-hmm. Netflix. Yeah, yeah. They're the ones that have the future. And it's also funny because, you know, like uh, the WWE Network right now is currently on Peacock. Yes. Which is another streaming service. Yes. Which we'll be talking about later. Yes. But it's just so strange to me how all of that works out. And I'm curious to see how, if they're going to do commercial breaks on Netflix. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, is it just going to be like a three hour show that's like never ending? Oof. Um, <laughs> That'd be rough. Yeah, like, I'm curious to see how all that's going to roll. Me too. And of course, the network eventually being on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh. Um. Outside of that, The Rock has also become the executive chairman of EKO. An N executive well, yes, chairman. Yes, yes. Okay. Not the only one. My apologies, yes. But, uh, yeah, uh, Dwayne Johnson has put himself in quite the position to, uh, if he wants to be the head of WWE, he can now. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, how do you feel about that? Um, I guess I just feel like he's, even though he obviously has such a history with the company, like, I feel like he's been separated from wrestling for so long that it just, I don't know, it just kind of feels weird. Like, I mean, he's an actor now. Or is he anymore? Or, oh, that's, that is true. Because a lot of his movies have been, uh, bombing. <laughs> that is, that is true. That and is true. And I think he's using this as a fail safe in case yeah. his movie career doesn't go the way that he wants it to anymore. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he can be, like, the general manager of WWE or yeah. Raw or SmackDown or whatever, and he can always be on TV and do his little yeah. promos and stuff like that. <laughs> That's what I think could potentially happen in the coming years. I could, years. I could, yeah. He could be the new uh, uh, VKM. VKM? Uh, think of the initials. Oh, okay. I get yeah, the in, in, <laughs> name we can no longer say. <laughs> yeah. Since apparently um, VKM is getting the uh, Chris Benoit treatment and uh, is no longer, you can't even search for him on WWE.com. Like, okay. they erase everything about him. Like, just on .com, I'm assuming. Because, I mean, they can't... Well, could you imagine if they got rid of, like, the whole Attitude Era? Well, that, and then also, I mean, like, he did commentary for however many yeah. years. Like, that wouldn't be possible. Oh, it's not possible. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's just gonna be a little... Scrub recent memory, and we're just not gonna mention what he did in the past. Yeah. You know, it's like, who won the 2004 Royal Rumble? What 2004 Royal Rumble? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, outside of that, more wrestling news. Cody Rhodes has been announced as, uh, the cover of 2K24. And that's pre- that was pretty much a Freddy foreshadow to, uh, things that, uh, we'll be talking about later. It's true. It's true. Uh, yes, on the normal edition yes. of WWE 2K24, Cody Rhodes is on the cover. Yes. Um, on the deluxe version, I think it's Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley? I think so. Yeah. Think so. Yeah, so they're yeah. on the covers as well for the deluxe version. Mm-hmm. As someone who doesn't play the games, what no. do you think of uh, this? Um, 
I mean, Cody Rhodes, he achieved what he wanted pretty much. I mean, he's almost there anyways. Hey, he has to finish the story. He has to finish the story. Like, he left AEW in the dust and he went to WWE and he wormed his way into where he wanted to be. Um, So good for him. Good for him. I'm I sure feel like Brandy's there should be chance of USA somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure Brandy's upset since she doesn't get to be on TV anymore. Yeah, I, it doesn't seem like she's really doing anything. I mean, obviously she has, they have a kid now, so she's being a mom, but. No, no, remember she was trying to shop around her, uh. Her Cooking her, show. Her cooking show. Yeah, where she can't cook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be like a, a great uh, dive if we yeah. ever do that one day. Yeah. You Oof know, stuff. just like talk about all the failed ventures of AEW and stuff like that. But, yeah. Uh, um, as far as the other cover, um, I mean, oops, sorry, I just hit you with my notes here. It's okay. You almost <laughs> gave me a paper cut with your notes. It's okay. It's okay. We're good. Um, I I mean, obviously, it's been a, quite, a, quite a period since we watched WWE, so it's been a while since I've seen either one of those wrestlers, but I always like Rhea Ripley. I thought she was pretty cool. Um, Bianca Belair, I know she's a strong, strong character, strong wrestler, so eh, fine. All the metalheads love Rhea Ripley. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She is a walking thirst trap for the metalheads. <laughs> she knows it. Yeah. And I'm a okay with it. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. So, any thoughts from you? Well, of course, I uh, should mention that uh, because Cody is on the cover, there's also a DLC pack that will be coming down the line yes. of the Nightmare Family. Yes. Which is superstar Billy Graham, who yeah. has no affiliation with the Rhodes family. Yeah. Nope. Two different versions of Cody Rhodes. Yes. Like um, one in I, where before he became the American Nightmare. Yep. And then of course Stardust. Stardust. Yes. And of course the the man's name who can never leave his mouth anytime he does mm. a promo. Death the Road. Yes. And also wasn't Pharaoh part of it too? I think Pharaoh was a part of that too. The like puppy. I think they were able to walk walk down with Pharaoh. I stuff. love Pharaoh. He's... Or he might be a part of the card game that they have on there. That might be the that case. That could be. Yeah. Either way. I love that puppy. Mm-hmm. Pharaoh is a very, <laughs> very good puppy. He is. So that's all for wrestling news. Outside so of that. So far, yes. Outside of that, we saw that Rockfest announced their lineup. Yes, Rockfest, uh Cadot, Wisconsin. Yes. Uh, the first official Rockfest and the re- the one that has like the real name yeah because there's do you know how many festivals out there are called metal fest or oh, rock fest absolutely. Or, yeah just like all of that stuff yeah um apparently the one in Cadout, wisconsin is like the first true rock fest yes and we saw this uh looks like it is from wednesday to saturday yes and we're gonna go from the bottom now we're here of course of course um yeah, this is a very interesting. The, the Wednesday bonus bash. Yes. You have to buy the three-day pass to be able to attend the show. <laughs> um, Ever Noir, who I actually know the drummer. Uh, he lived one town over from me. Oh, nice. Uh, um, Kill Akio. Not familiar? Kilikoi, I think. The Kilikoi. That might be the way to say it. Yeah. Uh, Feel, Shallow Side, Psycho Stick, Burning Witches, Quiet Riot, and Headliner, Vince Neal. I will <laughs> say without a shadow of a doubt, this is the best night of all four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Metal that's fairy. rough. That's How rough. I mean, so usually when they put out their lineups, the Wednesday is most up my alley because it tends to be like some of the '80s kind of acts and stuff like that. Um, ooh, this is a rough one though. I mean, Vince Neil. I think we've all seen his um, abilities nowadays, and it's not great. And Quiet Riot. What? Who's even in Quiet Riot anymore? I, um, I think they only have one original member. I think so. Burning Witches. I can't remember. You said you love their album from last year. Oh, that was. Okay, yep, yeah. I did. I did like that album last year, so they're they're good. And it's funny because you got confused, like, why is Courtney Cox on this album? I know, <laughs> <laughs> not realizing there's a musician on, named Courtney on Spotify. Cox. It said featuring Courtney Cox. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Psycho Stick. I do not like. Oh, the, oh, we've never gone into that. And it, 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 do tell. Well, um, what, what's what do you got against Psycho Stick? So I mean, I've only heard them a couple times. Way back when, long before you were in my life, there was a guy I was talking to. I never dated or anything like that but he seemed nice at first and he turned into a complete ja and he was super into them and i just it, it, it turned me off to me before i even heard them but then like they were just i don't know beer they're annoying is good. Beer is good. they were just beer annoying they were just and annoying they're just annoying so uh and the other bands i've never heard of so <laughs> well those are all local bands i figured as much but yeah. you mm. might like evermore they're yeah. like a, a female fronted band I, I didn't know any other way to say that i don't even yeah. like saying female fronted yeah but um you might like them? Maybe. Um, I, 
know their drummer from all the emo bands that he used to be a part of. Um, back when I was a drum teacher, uh, he was just uh, starting to form bands. Yeah. Uh, he learned how to play drums uh, from Guitar Hero and Rock Band and stuff, mm -hmm. which explains the weird way he has Tom set up, but that's a different story for a different time. Yeah. Uh, kind of a little bit of a symphonic element to it, mm -hmm. so maybe. 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 All right, so let's get into the, the days proper here with Thursday, July 18th. Yes. Uh, going from the bottom, now we're here. Lockjaw, Cruel Fool, Heartsick Heroine, Gravesig, which I can only imagine is a Danzig tribute band, uh, Cowboys from Hell, which I can only assume is a Pantera tribute band. I would assume. Illusions of Grandeur, Twinspan, Nine Left Dead, Citizen Kane. Um, if I was still alive, I would be suing them. <laughs> Uh, Gabriel and the Apocalypse, a uh, big old local band here. Soft Spoken, Cultist Black, Until I Wake, Crossbreed, No Not Crossfade, and No Not Cybreed, Crossbreed. <laughs> uh, True Villains, Citizen Soldier, Sleep Theory, uh, oh, now actually some, uh, national bands, uh, Upon a Burning, Burning, uh, uh Upon a Burning Body, <laughs> Aaron or Aaron Jones, Dirty Honey, Seven Dust, Kill Switch Engage, 311, and Headliners, 30 Seconds to Mars. What a mix. Um, so for my end, I, I've said before I do enjoy a 30 Seconds to Mars album, but I do not enjoy what they are now. <laughs> Kill Switch Engage, I do love. Um, outside of that, I mean, it, it, no, I mean, I, I obviously there's some bands I've heard of. Three Eleven, not my, not my jam. Seven Dust, they, they, they are what they are. Outside of that, I don't really know any of them. I mean, I've heard a couple of names, but I don't know their music. You? Yeah, I love Kill Switch. I love Seven Dust. Mm -hmm. Um, I really don't want to go see Thirty Seconds to Mars, and uh, <laughs> I feel like uh, there's gonna be recruitment caps uh, during that day to uh, go into Jared Leto's island of. Uh, unspeakable acts. I guess it's just weird to me that they're headlining. Oh, number hey, one. Do you realize how big they are? Are they? Yeah. I didn't. I guess no, I didn't realize that. No, in our that. circles, yeah. they're hated. Yeah. In the world, yeah, they're loved. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's also the biggest name of the whole, the whole thing. I mean, Kill Switch isn't going to be headlining this. Seven Dust isn't going to be headlining this. Three Eleven isn't going to be headlining this. Fine. I guess I'm. I have a skewed sense of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I totally stand. But now, Friday, July 19th. Ooh, yes. Um, from the bottom, now we're here. Uh, Zato, Dead Amsterdam, Mother Wind, Sabatha, which I'm assuming is a female-fronted Black Sabbath tribute band. Maybe. The Hybrid Theory, which I know is a Linkin Park tribute band because yeah. they followed me on Instagram. Oh. Domidium, The Rumors, American Overdose, Reign of Z, Kaza, Living Dead Girl, Rob Zombie tribute band, uh -huh. City of the Week, local band, Un Cured. Um, I think I interviewed them before. Uh, Silent Theory. Saul, or I See St or no, 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 my apologies. Saul, I See Stars. Cold, Stabbing Westward, From Ashes to New, Atreyu, Beartooth, Parkway Drive, and Headliner, Shine Down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I absolutely love Stabbing Westward outside of that. Well, we already I, saw them headline. Exactly, exactly. Um, outside and of that, them. we did, we did. Uh, uh, 15 year old me was just on the highest cloud that day. Anyways, um, outside of that, no thank you. Uh, I love Cold. Yeah. I love the early day Cold albums. And that's about all I would want to see out of this that I haven't already seen. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we've seen Stabbing Westward together. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. All right. But now, here's the one that everyone <laughs> has been going bonkers over, either Aww. positively or negatively. Yes. Uh, Saturday, July 20th, in probably the most divisive day they've ever put together in all 30 years of <laughs> Rockfest. And I'm talking about the days when they just used to put 70s and 80s Southern rock bands on this. I remember those days before it became like a commercial rock, yeah. rock fest. Yeah. Uh, hammered Down Hard, Giggity, <laughs> Sin with Two Eyes, Leaving Hope, Motor City, head. Who's who? Never wake. Who I've actually interviewed. Their singer kind of looks like uh, Matt Hardy when he's broken Matt Hardy. Oh. <laughs> um, Sepsis. Dark Sun. Allborn. Eyes Like Midnight. Ignocent. Is that it? I think so. Okay. Kingdom Collapse. Lou Phoenix. Local band. Felix. Felix. I wish it was Felix. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Another Day Dawns. Holy Wars. Lilac. Or Liliac. Austin Mead, who I think is a part of, um, one of those, uh, big, uh, emo core bands. Uh, I'm forgetting. Uh, asking Alex Alexandria, that's who it was, or at least he used to be mm -hmm. at one point. Gotcha. Struggle Jennings. I know Shooter Jennings, but yeah. I don't know who Struggle Jennings. Uh, the Two Live Crew. 
the fake two live crew <laughs> fever 333 the who no no not that who h u yes uh which is a mongolian metal band who does a lot of throat singing all right chevelle and headliner who i saw last night on the tv jelly roll yes the metal fairy there's not a winner in the bunch for me um i do think i saw boo felix live at one point i can't remember when or how or where but i feel like i did you liked never wake but this was years ago so i know you forgot who they were yeah i don't remember but yeah i i don't like anything i don't know most of them so yeah what's wrong with two live crew anyways what's your opinion no, no i don't know i i've never listened to them yes you have then i don't know who they are <laughs> They're one of the greatest rap duos of all time. Okay, I don't remember who they are. Oh, uh, if you were. The, the album Nasty As They Want To Be, the very first rap album with a parental advisory sticker on it. Uh, okay. All their songs are just filthy. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> besides Never Wake, which I'm surprised that they're, it, at least from the looks of it, they're going to be playing not the main stages, but uh, the uh, the cover band bars uh, that are like a couple miles away in the parking lot area. Oh, jeez. Yeah, because uh, with a rock fest, you got to park miles away oh. in the campground area and then you either walk or take a shuttle to where the stages are. Oh, gross. Yeah, which is another reason we don't go. I never, I would never, that is not my type of living. No. Um, I don't, I've never heard a no to Jelly Roll. No. But yeah. I know he, like, exploded last year. Yeah. Um, uh, The Who, you you might like The Who. Okay. Uh, H-U. I know you don't like the W-H-O. That is true. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I've never seen a Rockfest bill that was never meant for me. I know. Also, this is the fake Two Live Crew. <laughs> it's like a tribute band to Two Live Crew. Yeah. But it is such a strange thing. They got country, they got hip hop, they got Christian <sighs> rock, they got Mongolian metal. They they got <laughs> uh, they got so many cover bands playing the cover band venue. Yeah. Uh, just oh, overall, just a friggin' pass. Yeah. Yeah. Nice say that sadly with kill switch i know on there. i know <laughs> and i can only hope that there will be a minneapolis state or something and uh, we can actually go see them once that would be nice with light torch oh man if only i'll bring two bras to throw <sighs> never did that for me you're right and now it's time for my least favorite segment of the show but this is very good on the heart of the metal fairy <laughs> who does enjoy her trash and I trash do. accessories it is the metal fairies <laughs> reality review Ever, ever do that to me. No, and now it's time for the Metal Fairies Reality Review. Oh, please make the voices stop! Despite it being my least favorite segment of the show, that is my favorite intro for the show. Yes. Because I created that first of all these new ones, and it fits me so perfectly. It's almost what I hear from you anytime I watch it in the bedroom when you're trying to sleep. <laughs> it's me, this is hell, you dig belly? <laughs> So, uh, like last week, there was two reality shows I watched this week, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and Beverly Hills. Um, up with Salt Lake City, oh, so... Let me crack open a cold one for yes, this one. Yes, you need one. <laughs> <laughs> with Salt Lake City, it was the third part of the reunion show. This was the final episode of the se season. Um, so we really got more into Monica's involvement with Re Revality Von Teese, the Instagram account that she was a part of. Um, she really emphasized how, you know, while she uh, was a part of it, she wasn't the only person. There was a group of people kind of running this whole thing. And really the reason it was started was to tear down Jen, who was put previously on the series, um, but she's now in prison. <laughs> um, she was apparently a very, very terrible person who did a lot of bad things to a lot of bad people. Um, but unfortunately, the account went on to also talk badly about other women on there as well and that's kind of where their line is, was drawn where they were very hurt by it and even though she claimed she wasn't a part of that she was there just to tear down Jen they just really weren't seeing eye to eye um yeah and uh I fully as I was trying to fall asleep uh, to all of the incoherent screaming that was going on <laughs> uh, I find her to be a very bad person uh hiding behind a persona on a social media account to be able to tear down everyone else uh, part of the Real Housewives instead of uh, doing it on her own account or saving it for the show. Well, like she said, though, I mean, she was part of it to tear down Jen, which who is a criminal who is behind bars and who she couldn't really come out as herself and say a lot of things because then she would have been held accountable, possibility for that, and possible of legal actions and stuff like that. So, Well, you know, Vince McMahon just 
wanted to start a wrestling company, and look how that turned. Two completely different things, buddy. Back but up. They, but they interweb together. They do not. Yes, they do. Stay in your lane, bud. Stay in your lane. Um... <laughs> Um, so the topic came up of, you know, did she try out for the show because she wanted to be on the show or because she actually wanted to, like, be friends with these women and stuff like that? And, uh, it, it, she, her response was, well, why not both, you know? And there's, it's true, like, why, why can't she want to be on the show and kind of have this fame? Obviously, it's not for everybody, but some people do want that. And why can't she have that and still want to get to know the women and stuff as well? The social media account, that's why. This doesn't mean she can't want both. Uh, the master of all evil, Andy Cohen, even said it himself that uh, had he known that she was part of the social media account, uh, she never would have been involved on the show. Yeah, well, according to her in her first round of interviews, she did tell the producers, which even though he says that they wouldn't have her on the show, then is that really the truth? I mean... Yeah, Real Housewives, the place you go for truth. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, it's bound to cause drama, so why wouldn't they have her on? But the legality and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, another segment that came up during that particular reunion also had to deal with legality. Okay, you want to tell me what it was? Well, yes, we'll, we'll be getting to that. Don't jump ahead. <laughs> um, Heather and Lisa then started talking about how Monica was like stalking Jen and using like her cameras to spy on her and all this stuff and just kind of making a ton of accusations around her. Um, and Monica said something. I, I feel for Monica with this piece because like it came out wrong. She said that, so basically what she was trying to say is that she was working with the FBI at that point because she was like giving them information information about Jen Shaw and um she was trying to find more things against Jaw Jen by like driving by her house once in a while to try to catch her doing bad things like drunk driving and stuff like that but it came out it came across to the women like she said she was working for the FBI and they just would not drop that it was like a dog with a bone and that was just gross I thought um Heather went on to say how um her being a part of the show really just ruined the experience because trolls are the hardest thing for all the women who are part of any of these shows which i understand they also um, don't have to go online well that is true as well yeah um and she was saying how if it wouldn't be for the trolls there would be higher caliber women which then led monica to feel like well does that is that you saying that i don't belong here because i'm not high caliber which I totally understood her point then because the women like monica always felt a little bit not like she belonged because she's not the same um financial status and a lot of things as the other women um and the other women did nothing to help us they were really kind of rude uh, many times throughout the season to her. Well, I, what I got from the reunion show was uh, none of them liked her anymore and they yeah. want her gone. Oh, well, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's definitely where they ended. And but to be fair, she's also a rat. So, yeah, I mean, we'll get that was what I was going to end with. But anyways, um, then we moved on to Black Eye Gate. Um, uh, <laughs> your favorite part. Of course. Uh, so, how do you make two seasons out of this? I know, right? <laughs> so, Andy asked Heather, like, what actually happened? And she really didn't have a whole lot else to say other than they were both drunk one night and she woke up and she knew that Jen had given her the black eye but she wasn't quite sure how but she uh told jen that she would keep quiet for her and to the point where she's been lying about it throughout the years um she even like in one interview or something like that she blamed the producers for knowing about this and stuff which almost got some of the producers in trouble and stuff like that which should be illegal yeah and then andy brought up you know you're asking people to have forgiveness for you in the situation but you're not showing monica any forgiveness and monica then stepped in and was like you know i think Think this is part of the thing like we were both treated terribly by Jen Shaw in a physical way as well and while you kind of retreated and like kind of hid the truth from the world I went out and blurted it out instead and I thought that was like really like a huge statement I mean I I, I really felt for her both well I mean both of them in this situation but to me that I felt like with that stated like they should have felt uh, more remorse for Monica because I mean Heather did terrible things too they, they, I mean reality is they've all done terrible things they've all talked about each other they've all they wouldn't be on TV if they weren't terrible. Exactly. People. They all they've all talked to like media sources and not owned up to it. Like they've all done the same stuff and they're like holding Monica, I think, to a different standard. Yes, yeah, she was part of this reality of Antis, but like they've all done terrible things. Like I mm, I just feel like they're holding her to a different standard just because they're they're like that. Well, she's also an outsider. Well Yeah, yeah. Um, if it was one of them that was behind the accounts, I think it might be something a little different. Maybe. And so they then they end the reunion with Andy asking. All of them just give a warm and fuzzy and a cold and prickly. So 
<laughs> Basically, their highlight and low light from the season, of course, almost all of them said that their low light was Monica. So pretty much engraving that she's not going to be back for next season. I'm sad about it because I really... Or yeah. are they going to keep her there to add to the trauma? Uh, maybe. Um, Because money does talk. Um, <laughs> but Ratings I, talk. Yes. I, I find it sad because I really like Monica this season. Like, And she added a little bit extra pizzazz this season. And I don't know. I don't know. But that, that was the last show. So we'll see what happens. We'll see and what I happens. tried to fall asleep during the whole thing. You did. It you did, did not work. You did not. <laughs> um, And then up next, we had the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Uh, so they went on their trip to Spain. Uh, this was the first episode of that anyways. Uh, a big part of it was kind of strange. Like Sutton, she had a friend that she worked for back in the 90s named Mercer, who was some apparently really well-known like choreographer and like renowned like dancer, had dance studios, stuff like that. And he had passed away, I don't know when. And she had a thing of his ashes that she was bringing with her to Spain because they were going to the town where like he had his first studio or something like that. And it was just, it was strange, but it was, you know, it's, it's Sutton. Um, <laughs> after there, Anne-Marie, the, the new, uh, character from the, the last episodes, um, of course she had to, uh, rile people up some more. Um, <laughs> so a, a comment she had made from the last episode when they were at the homeless, not toothless, uh, <laughs> what a terrible, terrible it name. It is terrible. The, the homeless, not toothless event was, is something alluding to the fact that single people are lonely and insecure. And there was a couple uh, of the women who just really didn't like that because a couple of them are divorcees and it felt like her like just putting them down essentially. And so well, they, then they're not housewives anymore if they're divorced, right? No, that's been since the first season. They're, they're not all I, wives. I know. <laughs> hey, look, I'm trying to give the other side of like a, the people who don't watch reality uh, TV. I'm trying to be that counterbalance. That's here. true. That's true. Um, So they brought this up with her and she kind of apologized. She was a, like a very aggressive apologize apology like well i'm i'm sorry i mean blah 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 you know like if that's an apology i wouldn't want it and then of course she had to like throw crystal under the bus who they they had had their altercation last week because crystal had called her a uh, complete a i think or something along those lines or a complete b um and she had brought up how when she first met crystal and keep in mind they've only met like a few times throughout the years um that apparently crystal told her that none of the women were well educated and they were all shallow um and how she, crystal was like the only true social light and now the, the feelings around this were were torn up a little bit because back in crystal's early days on the show she she definitely talked some some s about the other women and it, it wouldn't be a, aside from her to like say those things but it would be kind of strange for her to tell a stranger these things um so that was some of the women kind of believed it some of them didn't believe it um but as far as being a social light like i none of the women believe that she would say that and sutton really was the only social light out of the group so um but it was just it was just kind of crappy for like her to throw crystal under the bus when she's like the one like causing all these issues and stuff so that was that was annoying um outside of that was i sleeping during this one or did you watch that in the living room um i think we're sleeping during this okay oh because i don't remember any of this so yeah and one other thing she said to uh and kind of closing to crystal was that i expect a thank you for for giving you something to talk about making you relevant (laughs) Ouch. I know. It was terrible. It was terrible. That's what you say to me all the time. No. You, no. Because no, because you joined this podcast, you're making me relevant. <laughs> yes, that that's how I view this whole thing. <laughs> um after that then they're they um i can't remember if they're having dinner or what they're doing but uh erica who uh if you remember from previous seasons uh she and her uh now ex-husband um they were facing some criminal charges um because of a lot of things that he had done shady as a lawyer and apparently there was a lot of a lot of people who were kind of um conned out of a lot of money that her husband had you know conned them out of it and she was kind of facing repercussions as a result of his actions and and there was this big story about like she had these like million or I, I think it was even more than that like multi-million dollar earrings that like people were saying were pot- bought with the money that they had like conned these people out of but she like refused and was like no it's not part of that it's you know it was purchased with like actual money that we had blah 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 I'm not giving them up and the big like argument back when this happened was the other women were saying well regardless like why don't you just give up these earrings and then that can give some of the money back to 
these people, like be the bigger person, you know, even if it wasn't you doing this, like regardless of all this stuff, like just be the bigger person. And she was just a terrible person with some of the things she said at that time. But she came out now saying that she had won um, a court case or something around that. It's basically saying that she was correct all along, that the earrings are hers and she gets to keep them and blah, blah, blah. And, like, like she, in her mind, she was like vindicated, but it's like, you just look at her ball lady. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then finally, um, at the very end of the episode, they were uh, driving to a church, some event they were going to, and um, it was a very windy, icky little road that they were on, and somehow Crystal got very, like, um, I don't know if she was having, like, issues with the height or just kind of feeling trapped or something like that, and when they got her, her hands were, like, um, like, the veins were popping out of her hands. I don't know. I don't know what you would, how you would describe it, but, like, they were calling 911, so <laughs> lots of drama ahead for next week as well. Um, but yeah, that was The Real Housewives this week. Uh, Real Housewives Beverly Hills will continue next week. And also Vanderpump Rules starts. Oh, goody. I know. Get my, ready. My favorite one. Get ready. Yeah, I, well, if you think I've been uh, snide and... Uh, <laughs> just wait. Just wait. Because uh, Vanderpump <laughs> Rules spoils the blood yes. of me. And uh, maybe people prefer that conflict when we go maybe. back and forth yeah. like this. So. Yeah. yeah, if you're into reality TV, um, I don't know how many people checking this out are but just yeah. in case you are uh are you checking out the real housewives do you have any uh, feelings agreeing or disagreeing with the metal fairy uh, let us know down below and uh can't wait next week for vanderpump rules that's yeah. gonna it's, it's gonna be great uh coming up next here is a segment i for two weeks now have forgotten to record an intro for but yes. uh it'll be all the more worth it once i actually make it yeah it is a segment we call accountability 101 and the last couple weeks have been kind of hit so far we had pain of salvation we had faith no more mm -hmm. the proto show of course doc fashion disco and polka dot cadaver yeah but this week we might have gone into a different direction but yes. um, i'm curious to see where everything's going to be going with this with the horror band from Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, known mm. as the Lion's Daughter. Yeah. Uh, it's a band that uh, I have really grown fond of. Uh, they uh, really attack us little really dark, evil horror stuff, and then they... Uh, especially in the last couple albums, they've added a lot of John Carpenter-style synthesizers to be able to add kind of that 80s cheese kind of mm -hmm. feel behind the metal. Yeah. And I wanted you to check this out because of that. You know, yes. like, there's been some horror bands that I never thought you would enjoy that you have turned out to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we talked about in our road trip yesterday. Yes. Doc Fashion Disco and Polka Dot Cadaver. Yeah. Both horror bands. Mm -hmm. And you never would have thought you would be able to enjoy those. Yeah. But now... You put them in your dream festival lineup. Yes, I did. So, you know, I, I figured I'd shoot my shot and uh, try <laughs> that with The Lion's Daughter. Yeah. And I went with probably their most popular album, which I think would be the one to get you into them, mm -hmm. Skin Show. Yeah. Uh, it's their previous album. Of course, their newest one, Bathhouse, came out last year, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And, of course, uh, made it into my top 40 albums of the top 100. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to go with Skin Show because, again, it's the most popular. I think it has some the most catchy songs on there. It's not really the most diverse album that they have. I would yeah. think that would be Bathhouse because it, it goes into so many different territories. Mm -hmm. But this one kind of has the central horror metal theme and the synthesizers and everything attached to pretty much all the songs. Yeah. Now, apparently you checked this out uh, while you were working your main gig. Yes. On, uh, on Friday. Yeah, I had it on the background. Yeah, so um, I know you weren't able to give it your full-on attention here. Right. But with that said, what did you think of Skin Show? by the lion's daughter i i will say it's kind of hit or miss like the ones where the synth was the songs where the synth was way, way more prominent those ones i enjoyed so like neon teeth dead in dreams uh snake fest skin show chemist those ones i enjoyed the ones that didn't have as much synth were a little bit harder for me just because they are so harsh so kind of raw and just aggressive like they, they were a bit harder for me but I, I appreciate the synthy ones that's more than i expected before so yeah. It kind of a hit again. That actually makes me happy. I figured you yeah. just would have hated the whole thing. <laughs> I kind of figured that going into the whole thing that uh, you just weren't going to like any of it. But um, yeah. was there anything else that you enjoyed about it? Or was it just the synth? Mainly the synthiness. Like, I, I will say, like, they, they didn't catch me as much as, like, like a dog fashion just go, um, um, polka dot cadaver. Polka dot cadaver. They, they, they didn't have that same catchiness to me that they did. But I, I appreciate them for what they were. Like, I think it'd be good for, like, the right kind of mood. Like, like, 
setting up a Halloween playlist or something like that, you know, something like that. I figured Neon Teeth would be one of those catchy songs on there. That, that one was, that was a good one. That was one of my favorites. So, yeah. Would you ever check out anything else of theirs? Maybe. I mean, I'd, I'd at least like skip through it to see if it has those synthy moments or more like kind of catchy times. <laughs> well, Bathhouse does have that. Okay. But um, it's also got some more slower stuff. It's got a little more thrashy stuff sometimes, but okay. uh, it does have the synthy stuff throughout all of it. Okay. It's just a little more expanded upon. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think kind of like a Faith No More, like there's songs that I would maybe include, but I wouldn't necessarily go back to whole albums. That makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. And that's actually more than I expected. Yeah. So that that makes me happy. I figured this one might be kind of a ugh, kind of thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that makes me very, very happy that uh, you actually did check it out. I and did. Uh, you did, did find at least a few tracks that uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you thought were a little toes happen. Yeah. So um, I know we don't have as much to say because you weren't, uh, it wasn't entirely your bag. Yeah. So I think it's time for us to spin the choice. All right. Uh, you got 22 bands right now. Okay. Uh, to be able to spin the choice for. And I'm going to shuffle all these up here so you have no idea what's uh, what's possible here and there. Okay. Now it's time for you to spin the choice. Big money. Big money, big money. No whammies, no whammies. Ooh. What do we got this week? We got Baroness. All right. Now, you already kind of like Baroness. I, yeah, I know there was a couple songs that I enjoyed. Well, you like the album Purple. Okay. Uh, you did put that on there. Um, uh, yeah, this one's actually going to be kind of hard because Purple would have been the album for me to choose, and I well, think I might do that. I have no recollection of it, <clears throat> so <laughs> you might <Yeah>. as well. <laughs> We talked about this in the car yesterday as well, too, where uh, if, if it's not immediately on her mind and it's not something she actively goes to over and over and over again, yeah. she will forget it. I feel like I manage the space in my mind different than other people. Like, if I really care about something and, like, I have a passion around it, it'll stay in my mind. But if I don't see any foreseeable use for it, I, I, I chuck it out. I don't, have, I don't have room for that. But if you heard the songs, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, we'll go with the album Purple. Okay. Because I think that would be the one that you would most enjoy. Yeah. And honestly, I think all the Baroness albums would have tracks on it that you would enjoy. So, yeah. Um, if there's a particular color that you like outside of Purple, sure, sure. I think you should go with that one next if you listen to more than one Baroness album. Is there a green? Uh, there's a double album called Yellow and Green. Well, I don't like yellow. Um, well, when you look at the double album where it says green theme, mm-hmm. that's the first track and then okay. the rest of them down, that would be maybe that'd be the second one. Or is there one. pink? Uh, not pink. Well. There's there's red album, <laughs> there's blue record, okay. there's yellow and green, okay. there's purple, okay. there's gold and gray, okay. and then the album from last year, Stone, which is the first one that's not a part of the color spectrum. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, just like pick a color and see if something's for you. Yeah. And we'll it go with might purple. Be. We'll go with purple. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know. I meant the album besides purple. Yes. If you decide to go down that way. All right. So, for anyone checking this out, uh, do you enjoy The Lion's Daughter? Or are you just hearing about them for the first time because of this? Are you interested in checking out some horror metal with John Carpenter style synthesizers uh, let us know all of this down below and uh, see if you have a new band to go check out alright coming up next we have our theme of the week well now I'm here to tell you about the only real path to mental health now it's time for our theme of the week what will the topic be this week that's right it's the something or other And yes, Metal Fairy, what is the theme of this week? The theme of this week is our favorite movies of all time. Yes, um, you just finished this up today, didn't you? I did, this yeah, morning, yeah. Yeah, before mm-hmm. I woke up. Yes. And I finished it up uh, the night before as I was trying to fall asleep. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did this and uh, even had to make a couple changes uh, while you were getting ready for the podcast really? today. I, All had right. to, I switched a couple things out. This one was actually really hard for me. Me too. Me and too. And I'm not even sure if I'm happy with it, but I'm, me either. I'm, I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna stand behind it the best I can. Gosh same, darn it. Same here. Same here. And of course, we have to spin the choice to see who's going first. Yes. Round and round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. Nose. Oh, Ooh. I am going first you are once going again. First. You've been lucky lately. You've only had to do this once since we started doing this. <laughs> One out of three times. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you got a 33rd and a third percent chance of having to go first. But you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so I'm going to go with my number 10 here. And yes. this isn't in the best top 10 order, I'll yeah. say again as well. Yeah. But it, it feels like a top 10 that makes a lot of sense for me. Yeah. And I tried to do this as, like Fox News, fair and balanced as possible. All right. But, All right. Uh, number 10 is The Batman. Okay. Yes. Um, I know there's a particular crowd out there who hates Robert Pattinson. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming it's only because of the Twilight movies. Yeah. I've never seen them. Yeah. So I can't say if he's good or bad or if they're terrible movies because I've <laughs> never seen them. Yeah. And I'm not going to. Yes. I've only seen him in one previous movie, The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse. Mm -hmm. uh, again, another. A24 just puts out the best horror movies. They do. They do. I mean, Neon does some great stuff too, but I thoroughly enjoy what A24 does. Mm -hmm. And Bloomhouse is the most hit or miss thing out there. But A24, they hit it out of the park like 90 to 95% of the time. Yeah. But uh, that movie he was incredible in. And of course, uh, he was working off of William Dafoe as well. So, you know, it was a great combination between those two. Yeah. And uh, seeing him uh, taking care of himself to a mermaid statue was uh, pretty, pretty gosh darn funny. It was. It was. <laughs> but um, when he was announced as the, Bat the Batman, yeah. Bruce Wayne, a lot of people were very upset about this. Yeah. And I didn't have any reservations about it because I've only seen him in one role. Yeah. So I went into this with an open mind. I heard it was going to be very, very dark. Mm -hmm. And I like very, very dark superhero movies because it's more real. Yeah. Campy is fun, but I can never take them seriously. Yeah. This I can take more seriously. Yeah. And this was more, uh, one of the more serious uh, superhero takes that I've seen in quite some time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you don't see Bruce Wayne already as like the suave mf -er Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Wayne. No, he is a troubled emo child. Broken. Who's very, very broken, dealing mm. with mental health issues. Doesn't want to be a billionaire. Doesn't no. want to do any of his things. No. But he has been Batman for a bit of time. Yeah. And I think he plays both sides really, really well. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people want to see Bruce Wayne as the suave guy. And I imagine in the second and third movie that will eventually come out, because all movies are trilogies these days. Yeah. That um, we'll eventually see him become that. Yeah. But seeing him grow into that is far more interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, seeing how broken he is and then becoming like the, the playboy billionaire that everyone knows him for yeah. will be much better. Oh, yeah. And with that said, I thought he was fantastic as Batman. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he didn't play him as much as you would think. I mean, he was kind of more the Bruce Wayne more than anything in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jeffrey Wright as uh, Commissioner Gordon, who is, uh, was, of course, a part of Westworld. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, we need to find a way to be able to watch the other seasons. I know I it's know. not on Max anymore, I know. but uh, maybe somehow, some way. Yeah. Uh, I thought he was a great Commissioner Gordon. Mm -hmm. um, the Riddler, uh, a very, very different take on the Riddler. Oh, yeah. Of course, mo most people of my generation only know Jim Carrey as the Riddler. <laughs> and that is a far, <laughs> far yeah. different take. Oof, yeah. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. A, a Catman that was actually, or a Catwoman Catwoman. that was actually enjoyable. Yes. Uh, Letty Kravitz's daughter, I forgot her name. Uh, Zoe. Zoe Kravitz. Mm -hmm. uh, she did a really good job with it as She's well. She's good. I like her in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just got me so excited to see where all of this is going to be going. Mm -hmm. um, according to James Gunn, this is not going to be canon to his DC universe. So okay. they're just going to be separate yeah. stuff. So um, he's going to get a different Batman when that time comes. Okay. But they're still going to be doing the Batman, the Batman trilogy. Okay. But um, it was almost three hours, which is another thing people didn't like, but I have yeah. no problem with that as mm -hmm. long as it's good. Despite the intro that I have in the beginning of the show, like in three hours, nothing of value was added. <laughs> There's some movies like that, but I think this is a dark, gritty superhero movie or uh, kind of an origin story, but not really. But I thought it was one of the best and I dare say my favorite non-campy superhero movie. Yeah. Yeah. I love this movie. I thought Robert was amazing in it. Um, I have seen the Twilight movies. <laughs> Um, All of them? I have, I have. Um, yeah, they're cheesy. They're cheesy, made for teenagers. But as far as acting, I mean, Kristen Stewart is the only lub in those movies. <laughs> what about the werewolf? Um, what, wasn't there a werewolf in the Twilight series? Oh yeah, there's werewolves. Uh, well, was that any good? I, it's, I mean, they're fine. They're okay. fine. Yeah. It, it, it seems like they just ripped off True Blood. Vampires, uh, werewolves, uh, all courting this one girl. <laughs> that's a prominent story in so many things, though. I mean, okay. I think Twilight is what like brought it to the masses of teenagers but that's been a common story which you'll see in my list later um for, huh. um um for a, a, I might lot, be learning something a lot of movies you. you'll find out you'll find out okay. um <clears throat> but no uh my number 10 is repo the genetic opera um why are you shaking
shaking your head. Four syllables, and you know why. I know she's in it, but it's she's really not that bad in it, honestly. But yeah, uh, who are we talking about? We're talking about Paris Hilton. Okay. Yeah, she's in the movie, but she's very non-essential. Anyways, I love sure. this movie. That's why she was plastered all over the advertising. Well, yeah. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna remember to crap on some of your movies later. <laughs> I'm well aware of it. I know one for sure you're going to. Okay, good. Um, So if you haven't seen this movie, it's a futuristic movie from 2056, I think it is. 2056? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then, unless I'm thinking of the dates wrong. But anyways, um, it's very futuristic. Um, It's in a land where, well, whatever, a time where everybody's organs are failing. And there is a um company that creates organs that they can, like, transplant into your body. But then they charge you a really huge amount and... You basically live your life just trying to pay them off and like in being in this like weird world like it's really hard to make money it's really hard to exist and all this stuff and there are um repo men who come and steal the organs back if you don't pay um but yeah it's it sounds crazy but it i love it it's and it yes it's opera so it's like it's singing throughout it's a musical but it's so like out there and just dark and gothy and just visually amazing i love the music throughout Terrence, uh, I forget his last name, it starts with a Z, but he's the one who like created this. Um, he's amazing as well, and I just I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll never give it a chance because of Paris Hilton. <laughs> you are so mean. <laughs> There's other good people in it. Like who? Um, I don't know who else Bill is in Mosley's it. Bill Mosley's in it. No, he's not. Yeah, he, he sings is. in this? Yeah, he's in it. I didn't know he was a singer. I mean, he doesn't sing a ton, but Well, he I mean, does actually, sing. I know he's a singer because he did an EP with Phil and Selmo. Well, there you go. But I didn't know he was that kind of singer. I mean, he doesn't do opera necessarily, but I mean, I musical. didn't say opera. Yeah, yeah, he's in it. You said opera. <laughs> you are going to watch this with me at some point. Why? Because you love me. Say I didn't love you. Then prove it. Yes, this is the bar. <laughs> this is the bar. You are here right now ladies and gentlemen this is the bar yeah you still haven't watched the original buffy the vampire slayer the superior i've seen parts of it i'll watch it no you saw clips because i watched like a a, a thing on it like no a... i've seen clips growing up too but well yeah we also saw clips when we went to go see david arquette and sure. we saw him flying out the window i'll and watch stuff. it i will absolutely watch it but i want you to watch this too number nine well, that'll be a cold day in hell number nine <laughs> Ooh, it's frosty in here. <laughs> it's a little nipply outside, but um, it's much warmer than it than it has been. Yeah. Because uh, we just got over the arc blast. That and, is true. Um, there's no snow outside anymore. Uh, end of January I in know. Minnesota. What is that? There's no snow. <laughs> This is the end times, so maybe I should watch it. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Number nine. Um, I had a hard time with this one because the way that I do top tens is mm. I never try to put multiple movies on here. And by that, I mean, like, I, I try to do, like, not from the same director, not from... Uh, same franchise kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, not the same franchise. I get you. Uh, different styles, all that stuff. Gotcha. So this one is a part of uh, one of my favorite directors of all time. Okay. Mel Brooks. Sure. And there were so many great choices to be able to choose from. The fact that I got you to watch Dracula Dead and loving it is just so near and dear to me. See, I do things for you yes. like that. Every everyone hates that movie for some reason, and they and it was Mel Brooks's as of right now. It was his last directorial uh, yeah. movie because it was uh, so uh, crapped upon. Mm -hmm. Yet it was so enjoyable, and you laughed just as much as I did. I did. I did. Um, you know, uh, young Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, but I went with one that I never thought I would get you to see mm -hmm. the Western. No Known as Blazing Saddles. <laughs> yes. They could not make this movie in 2024. Oh, no. There, no. Not a chance in hell no. they could make this movie. But if you look at the underlying theme of what this is about, mm -hmm. racists are stupid. Yeah. It's one of the greatest movies of all time. Yeah. Uh, you get Gene Wilder in there, mm -hmm. um, who just does a fantastic job as like a, a drunk shooter mm -hmm. cowboy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mel Brooks is one of the evil people in it. Um, there's so many great gags of like punching in the horse and the horse falls over mm -hmm. uh, the farting scene around the campfire <laughs> uh, the the fact that they the end of the movie they just uh, decide this is no longer a western this is going to turn into a musical and <laughs> everyone's wearing top hats and dancing yes, yes. and then they just drive in a car and drive off into the sunset <laughs> 
it just takes everything that I love about mm-hmm. uh, dry humor, stupidity, yeah. making fun of racists, mm-hmm. all these things that I love so much. Yeah. And yeah, there's some harsh words in here, but yeah. all the people who say those harsh words get their comeuppance in they this do. movie. They do. They mm-hmm. do. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy that. Yeah. So yeah, um, if those words don't really affect you that much, mm-hmm. I, I implore you to check out Blazing Saddles. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was funny. It was definitely funny. And look at all the movies I've watched for you. Okay, you keep bringing this up. <laughs> I have to. My number nine is Requiem for a Dream. Which, which is kind of tug coloring going back to now. What do you mean? Jared Leto. Well. His cult. I. The, the latest 30 Seconds to Mars albums. Yeah. Anyways, he's a good actor. <laughs> but this movie is. It's Mormon time. Oh, Oh, but this movie is amazing. I mean, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically all about drug addiction and all the different ways that can impact you and your loved ones and just kind of the, the depths that people can fall to when they are suffering from addiction. And it's it's a hard watch, but it is so emotional and well worth it. And it's it's beautiful. Yeah, um, it's like another movie I have on here. It's one of the hardest movies to watch that doesn't involve death. Yeah, yeah. Which mm-hmm. uh, might be a spoiler, it might not, but... Yeah. Uh, everyone's lives are ruined yes. at the end of the at the end of the thing, and um, yeah, and just like the different types of drug addiction that goes on there too, so mm-hmm. it can affect all these different people. Yeah, and of course, uh, one of the greatest quotes that I can't say on here yes. with all the uh, businessmen uh, formed in a circle, blank to blank, From blank WWE. to blank. Yes, hey Yeah, who would have thought we could uh, pull those two together? I know, now? right? But uh, yeah, I love that movie. I didn't put it in my top ten because I figured it was gonna be in yours mm-hmm. and um there might be another movie that might be on your top 10 that i can't personally watch anymore because of who's involved yep uh, i don't have that one on my list either we're talking mm-hmm. about american beauty yeah um i didn't want to say it in case it was yeah no i i love that movie but kevin spacey it, it, you can't support him really anymore no yeah but it is an amazing movie though all right coming up next um the first of a few horror movies that make my top 10 list oh look at you um from my favorite uh anthology horror movie series Series. Yes. It is the original Creep Show. Nice. I love this to death. I love the comic book style that's a part of like all the intros and outros and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the, the Shutter series is Chef's Kiss. Mm-hmm. It is. It but is. Uh, the original movie is just so, so good. Mm-hmm. Like in the first one and uh, Rising from the Where's my cake? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Leslie Nielsen and Ted Danson. Yes. Uh, that's a legendary one. Uh, Stephen King finding the, the space poop. <laughs> it's like, I can't call it anything else uh, here. Yes. Uh, you know, one of the two main roles Stephen King has ever had in a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the bug one at the end is really hard to watch for people like you and me. Oh, yeah. But I love all the segments in Reap Show. I love anthology horror so much. Yeah. And it's just that perfect blend of horror and comedy. Yes. And it just works so fantastically well. Absolutely. Very good choice. Yeah. I, I, I know it didn't make your top 10. So it did not make my top 10, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And Reap Show was just how can you not love group show I exactly mean. <laughs> My number eight is Us. Um, We've gone about, about our love of Jordan Peele in previous episodes when we've talked about horror movies, but he's he is one of the best horror directors ever at this point. Um, and he's only done three movies. Yeah, yeah. Well, directed well, three of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this I is, thought there was another Monkey Paw Productions movie coming out soon. I think I heard something about that too. Yeah. But Sorry. That's okay. Um, This is my favorite of the ones he's done so far, though. It just... <sighs> I, we've talked about it in, in my favorite horror movies as well but basically there is a family that kind of goes on vacation and all of a sudden there's people that appear that are spitting images of them um and it turns out there's spitting images of everybody going like running around the the world and i won't get into what actually is going on or whatnot and i mean it's not super clearly defined as some somewhat kind of making kind of sense on your own but it, it just ties together so many like socioeconomic issues issues and world issues and horror and it just ties everything together in a perfect little bow and just makes you think makes you nervous makes you scared makes you everything and i absolutely love it now what makes this one stand out to you more than get out and nope yeah um for me like i i love both get out and nope for get out like (sighs) 
I feel like even though Get Out and No both like tackle, they both obviously tackle a lot of socioeconomic uh, things as well. Like, I mean, that's his thing. That's what makes his yeah, movie stand yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I like because the first one is, I mean, it, the socioeconomic issues are of the world, but like it's telling like one specific specific person's story. It just feels smaller, like story wise. Whereas, um, and and Nope is, I mean, Nope is even grander. It's like uh, more than this universe, kind of in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas us is like our world as a whole and, and just looking at our world, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Well, I was going to say that it seems like every one of his movies gets bigger and bigger yes. on a grander scale. Yeah. 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 And this one just was right at the right, like size essentially that it just makes me think more. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't put any Jordan Peele movies on here specifically because I knew you were going to put one on <laughs> here and I'm trying to add some variation to this. Yes. Just like another particular. Uh, horror director I did not put on this one because I have a feeling that he might have made your list. Okay. Um, we'll get to that if it comes up. If not, I'll, I'll spill the beans on that at the end. All right. Uh, but next up for me, uh, kind of talking about Requiem for a Dream, and I kind of Freddy foreshadowed this earlier. Yeah. Uh, one of the hardest and scariest movies to watch where no one dies, mm. Whiplash. Oh, yeah. Uh, J.K. Simmons is one of the greatest actors ever. Yeah. I, w- I watched him far too young watching <laughs> Oz on HBO back in the day <laughs> where he was a white supremacist in yeah, prison yeah. and uh, goes through this uh, giant re- reformation. Uh, if you ever check it out, uh, you know, it's obviously on Max now, but uh, won't give everything away. But he's done so many different things since then. Mm-hmm. He's the yellow m M&M. <laughs> He was on BoJack. Uh, he's on the farmer's insurance commercials. <laughs> He's done all of these things. But my favorite role that he's done outside of BoJack Horseman yes. is him being a band director mm-hmm. in Whiplash, yes. where, uh, you know, it seems like at first he's not bad. You know, he's kind of cool, kind of suave kind of thing at yeah. first. Yeah. But uh, when the drummer of, of this new band comes into play mm-hmm. and messes up twice, yes. he goes insane. Yes. And it's one of the hardest hitting music movies mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. And I think it can affect anyone who is like struggling to be the best at what they do. Yeah. And for me, it hits so hard as a former drummer myself. Mm-hmm. Maybe one day I play the drums again. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But you know, just, the, you know, just like striving to be your best. Yeah. And you got J.K. Simmons like screaming down your throats and almost killing you mm-hmm. to be the best and just messing with you along the way to make it happen. Yeah. It is basically a horror thriller movie mm-hmm. where no one dies. Yeah. And it's just so impactful. I'm so that was one of the first times that we I think it was the first time both of us sat down in a comfy chair at a movie theater yes it was our first recliner experience because we went to an AMC theater (laughs) in Coon Rapids yes and it was the only place around the Twin Cities area that was playing Whiplash Mm -hmm. Uh, we saw that on Super Bowl Sunday I will always (laughs) remember that and yeah uh, got to experience really comfy seats yes and watched one of the most uh, gripping terrifying movies I've ever seen in my entire life Yes. Yeah. I, I thought it was amazing. It's when we got to go back and watch again. Like, it's been way too long. It has. But it, it was great. My number seven is Midsummer. This was the director I was talking about. Okay. Um, I, I love many movies from this person, but... um, Ari Aster. Yes, Ari Aster. Um, this one stands out for me, though. I, I kind of, like, we've talked about in the past. Like, if you can make something scary in the daytime... <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> that you're really onto something and yes. it's just it's so different it's so unique um it, it covers like so many like the mental health things um just kind of differences in culture and stuff like that like it's so it's so unique and i love florence she's one of my favorite actresses she's amazing in i didn't it. know that yeah I, when we mentioned when we talked about our horror movies i mentioned her too like yeah she's one of my favorites for sure um good for her yeah good for her <laughs> good for her at the end of watching midsummer yeah. good for her yeah honestly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's terrible, but yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it is just it, it makes you question like every second what's gonna happen next because it's so all over the place and so many crazy things happen that you never expect. But it's it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I totally get it. Mm-hmm. And uh I left off one of his movies because it came out last year mm. and it, it might have that recency bias. Yeah. But I also knew you were gonna put Midsummer on here. I was afraid. But I was afraid. Yeah. Um it's me. <laughs> it's a three hour <laughs> movie about me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Obviously, they take some metaphorical ways and some drug trip ways and some sure. other things, but it's a story about me. They na- renamed him Bo. Yes. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they couldn't put Josh on there. I, I don't know why. I, I gracefully would have given him the name Josh. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix does a magnificent job with that. Yeah. And I also want to throw a Joker in there as well, too. I don't, oh, yes. I, don't, mm-hmm. I know it didn't make either of our top tens. Yeah. But that is the best uh, super villain movie oh, made yeah. so far. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, coming up next, uh, we go back into the uh, horror realm once again. Yeah. With my favorite horror franchise of all time, The Evil Dead. Nice. With The Evil Dead 2. Nice. That is my favorite one because Evil Dead is straight up horror. Like, it's not really meant to be what the series eventually became. It's just a straight up horror movie. Yeah. Army of Darkness is a straight up comedy with a little <laughs> bit of horror elements to it. Yes. Ash vs. Evil Dead is basically a comedy with some horror elements attached to it. Uh, the remake, well, I don't even know if it is a remake or a, a refreshing of the franchise, The yeah. Evil Dead in 2013. My least favorite one, but uh, that was trying to be scary again. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Evil Dead Rise, another full-blown horror movie, which I actually thought they did a bang-up job with. Yeah. But Evil Dead 2 was that perfect balance of horror and comedy at the mm-hmm. same time. It's where Ash gets the chainsaw, it gets his arm cut off, Yes. the boomstick, the all groovy. <laughs> all the landmark elements that you think of Ash and the Evil Dead, everything, mm-hmm. it's basically established Evil Dead 2. Yeah. And of course, at the very end, uh, where he gets trapped in the time warp and uh, ends up where he ends up going for Army of Darkness yes. happens in there. Yes. But um, I just, I love that one the most. And yeah. of course, uh, that uh, meme that I occasionally put on my Facebook wall of the, the deer hung up on the wall with that Agalock logo yes. underneath it. Yes. <laughs> that comes from there as well. Yes. I, I love this one. I think I probably like Evil Dead a little bit more than Evil Dead do die more of the horror person but sure totally understand my number six is amadeus um amadeus amadeus yes amadeus. right dr sayus dr, dr. sayus um oh, this has so this used to be my favorite movie like growing up this was my favorite movie for the longest longest time and why is that um I just, I mean, I, I love classical music, so we'll start with that piece. <laughs> um, but I just love, like, anything, like, of that time period, first of all. Like, like I, I, I love the, 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 like, the outfits and the wigs and the, the, the music and the, the, just the, the life of that time period. It just looks so fancy and lush and amazing. Visually, this movie is amazing. Then, of course, you add on music from Mozart. It's beautiful. And then you add on this, like, feud between Mozart and Salieri and the, like, all the stuff that Mozart is going through with like his father and stuff like that and like it, it's really a lot deeper than you would think it would be it's ugly it's but beautiful at the same time it's just everything and like I remember growing up when I was in like elementary school middle school in music class choir class stuff like that whenever like the teacher would be out or we'd be having just like an off day like we'd always like watch Amadeus they'd always throw that on because it came out in the 80s and you know, it was the big movie at the time and stuff and so many kids hated it and I just loved it it was like my dream day <laughs> But yeah, that's it. Uh, you left out the fart, but uh, otherwise, uh, pretty much agree with you on all of that. I didn't leave it out. I don't. Yes, need... you did. It's not something that I need to bring up. Yes, it is. It's one of the best parts of the movie. In your opinion. One of the best farts in cinema. 10 out of 10. No comments. What's your number five? <laughs> See, this is where you can crap on me. Good. Yeah. Um, I can't remember if I tried to get you to watch this or you watched it and you fell asleep or we just haven't gone down this route. Mm-hmm. But again, I, I do have a love of the comedy spoof movies and it all started for me with the Nick Gun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Leslie Nielsen and uh, mm. being detective uh, Frank Drebin and all of his... Uh, misadventures of being a detective. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, the, the Naked Gun series has a little bit of a tug collar thing going on with uh, a little character who gets the crap beaten out of him in all three movies. Uh, yeah. Known as the Juice, O.J. Simpson. Uh, yeah. But um, if you try to forget that, there's a lot of great comedy and stuff in there. It's just slapstick comedy, psych gags, all these things that I love, love so much. And mm-hmm. it all began from watching the TV reruns of the Naked Gun trilogy. Yeah. And I always hold the first one in the highest regard. And it's got your girl Priscilla in all three movies. That is true. That is true. Despite yeah. you not wanting to watch them. No. Yeah, I've never gone down that road and I don't want to. Really. Why? It just doesn't feel like my comedy. It's not bro. I know. I didn't say it was bro. <laughs> well, that's usually your excuse for not watching a lot of stuff, checking out a lot of stuff. Is Music. because it seems too bro Music, yes. No, no, you said that for Robocop too. It seemed like it was too bro. And then you actually yeah. checked it out and you enjoyed it. Well, that's an action movie. This is more comedy. 
Yeah. Like, I wouldn't call a comedy movie bro. Oh, there's plenty of comedies out there. Yeah. Well, anyways, doesn't seem like my type of Most of Seth Rogen movies. And... Yeah. Anyways, my number five is The Craft. I figured this would have been higher. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're not familiar, it is um a group of four teenage <laughs> teenagers who decide to start uh exploring witchcraft and some shenanigans happens and it <sighs> It, it's like a teenager movie, but it's just elevated because it has so many classic lines and scenes. And oh, I just love it. I just love it. And little little teenager me absolutely loved this too. Like I definitely explored a lot of witchcraft things when I was a teenager as well because I was just like them. And yeah, love it. You were practicing witchcraft? I, uh, were you Wiccan? No, I didn't refer to myself as Wiccan, but I definitely had a number of like spell books and stuff like that. You still do. Oh, I still do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I still have a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think they're underneath the coffee table they might right now. be they might be some there but yeah i definitely tried some things what about the reboot i haven't watched it though. will you watch it i don't know maybe sometime but it's not not my list right now and uh yeah i i think it's a funny movie even though it's not trying to be i, I look at it as a comedy yeah because <laughs> yeah how over the top everything is yeah and, he's sorry he's sorry <laughs> Netsky dies yeah i know <laughs> it's so sad uh, whenever if you're of a certain age and you were channel surfing through cable mm-hmm. Every time the craft was on, you always came across that scene yeah. when you were channel surfing. Or light as other stuff as a board. Yes. It was always one of those two yes. when you were channel surfing. Uh, my number four is another A24 film. Okay. Uh, one of the first A24 films that we saw. Okay. I don't think it was the first. It might have been, maybe. Yeah. I'm um, kind of forgetting the timeline here, but uh, it is just a, a great underground movie and has Patrick Stewart's best role. Of course, I am talking about Green Room. Yes. Uh, the story of this punk band who plays at a white supremacist bar <laughs> decides to play Nazi punks F off by the dead Kennedys yes and then discovers that it really is a white supremacist bar and their leader Patrick Stewart is a murderous psycho who <laughs> goes and attempts to unalive all of them. Yes. In one of the best horror, music horror movies that I've seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's other ones that are more like love letters to like metal and stuff like that. And they almost always have to do with the devil or something like that. This one's real. Yeah. This one's like real, real. Yeah. Like this could be a situation people actually get into. Oh, 100%. And that's what makes me enjoy it so much more is the authenticity behind it. Yes. And it's always stuck with me ever since. And of course, the star of the movie, this was his last role before he mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately uh, died from uh, his car being parked and the brake let loose and rolled down his driveway and crushed him. Yeah. Oof. Which is just a horrible, horrible way to go. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't I don't think Green Room made it onto yours. It's but what did, not. What did you but, think? Oh, I absolutely love that movie. That's another one I want to go back and watch again sometime soon. <laughs> uh, my number four is Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors. Um, Rocking with Duck. That's right. I I love the Nightmare series. I love Freddy. This one is my favorite. It just, I, I, I love the story of this one. I love the characters in this one. I love our pet. Obviously, I love Dokken. Um, I'm a wizard. I am a wizard. Um, <laughs> It's just, it's the best. The best. Yeah, it's, it's it probably is best. Yeah. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. I have a thing for a new Nightmare because it's like Freddy in real life. Oh, yeah. I love that one, um, too. I, I, I have a soft side for that, even if no one else does. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you said you like it, but I know the majority of people don't but <laughs> yeah. i have a soft side for that one yeah but uh dream warriors probably is the best for mm-hmm. any movie yeah and of course one with Johnny. Oh, of course yeah uh, the, the most infamous uh, em- uh infamous uh bad murder scene yes. ever yes so much blood mm-hmm. just so uh, number three uh based on the comics that i just picked up mm-hmm. yesterday yeah i got clerks nice now i could have went with jay and silent bob strike back because i honestly do enjoy that movie more although there are some jokes that are a little more uh collar tugging uh, especially when I saw the double feature yeah of that and uh, Jane and Silent Bob reboot which uh, not the best reboot in the world yeah but I uh, did see uh, Chris Jericho getting covered in poo which that I did true. enjoy that is true but uh, Clerks is the second Kevin Smith film I saw mm-hmm. uh, I picked it up on DVD saw all the special features uh, it's what got me into audio commentary and being mm-hmm. able to check out all that stuff and of course the Simpsons DVD I love checking those out when those were a thing but I just love the story of Dante and Randall I love 
the story of Jane Silent Bob. Yeah. So many endless quotable quotes in that movie. Um, this also could have been easily replaced with The Room as well for the oh, same reasons. Yeah. Like all the quotable quotes that happen in it yes. and everything. And just really, really funny, real moments. <laughs> yes. But, um, you know, Kevin Smith is one of my favorite directors and writers. And mm-hmm. he did a magnificent job with this one. And mm-hmm. uh, some say he'd never match this level ever again. Yeah. But uh, I pretty much enjoy all of his movies. Uh, although, again, I haven't seen Yoga Hosers. So I can't. That is true. I can't say all of them. That's yes. the one I haven't seen. Yeah, we'll have to see that sometime. <laughs> Uh, awesome pick. My number three is Underworld Rise of the Lycans. Um, so Underworld, if you're not familiar with the series, um, it is basically a war against uh, vampires against uh, werewolves. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> um, Rise of the Lycans is a prequel to all the movies. Um, prequel? Yes. Prequel. Okay, ghost. Prequel. <laughs> um, featuring um, kind of where the war started. Um, it shows the love between Lucian and Sonia, which is one of the greatest love stories outside of The Last of Us TV show. Bill and Frank. Um, yeah, Bill and Frank that has ever been shown. I I just, I love this movie. It's gothy, romantic, but tortured and horror and yeah, everything I could possibly want in a movie. It's beautiful. And Lucian, oh, what a studly, studly man. You're the only person I've ever taught who has actually watched and enjoyed the Underworld movies. They're definitely like, they have like terrible ratings, but like they have an underground following. Like we're, we're strong here. We're strong. A cult following, a cult if following. you will. Yes. Mm-hmm. And speaking of cult cult following movies. Mine is also a very cult following movie okay. that um, was not received well when it came out, sure. but uh, definitely found its following well after. Yeah. Featuring uh, two of the best actors who have ever existed, Norm Macdonald and Artie Lang. <laughs> <laughs> that number two, I got dirty work. <laughs> I unironically love this movie. Yeah. For the same reasons as The Room. Uh-huh. Endlessly quotable, gut-bustingly funny. Yeah. I love everything about the story, the characters involved, uh, Gary Coleman getting punched out by the devil in a boxing <laughs> match. Uh, I, 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 there's so many great things about this movie mm-hmm. that I cannot even describe in just a short little bit of time. Yeah. It's a terrible movie. Oh, yeah. It's an awful movie. Yes. But I love this movie so much. Oh. Oh, yeah. And of course, the grandpa from Problems, uh, Problem Child yes. is in it as well, too, yes. in one of his last roles. How can you not enjoy that? Out of all the people in that movie, how many people actually thought that Artie would be the one surviving and so many others are no longer with us? Him and Chevy Chase are like the only two that haven't <laughs> died yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. So what did you think of Dirty Work? Oh, it was funny. I mean, it's a terrible movie, like you said, but it, it's funny. It's funny, sure. Yeah. And sadly, it was supposed to get a sequel. Yeah. But then Bob Saget died. Mm-hmm. Who, Bob Saget directed Dirty Work. Yeah. Never forget, he is a dirty guy. He mm. was a dirty guy. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. Norm MacDonald died uh, shortly after that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Maybe he's the last one alive. Wow. <laughs> wow. Maybe it's because of all the drugs that he did. He kind of built up an immunity to die. Maybe. <laughs> My number two is Candyman. Um, it's my favorite horror of all time, but it's my second favorite movie. Wow. Um. Wow. Wow. Flav of Flav. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, I've raved about Candyman in the past, but it's. Number one, uh, he, Tony Todd is just such a haunting, amazing character Like in, in anything he does. But in this movie in particular, he has, just has that presence about him. Virginia Madsen in the first one is just absolutely amazing too. And then the story of Candyman, it's like, again, it kind of it mixes socioeconomic status of years, years, years in the past and today and horror. And it just like is this perfect combination of so many things that I love. And it's absolutely amazing. It is a great movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about the reboot sequel? Yeah, I love the reboot too. That was really great as well. But the the, the original still will always hold a place above that for me. Well, the reboot sequel made me cry at the end. So, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I hold that one in a little higher regard. I understand. And hey, Tony Todd's in that. Uh, yeah. The, did you ever see the Night of the Living Dead remake with Tony Todd? Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah, Bill Mosley's in it. Uh, Tony think, Todd's in it. I think I did. But I can't. Okay. Remember. It's been a while. Yeah, you should rewatch that. It's yeah. pretty. Yeah. Um, and of course, my number one should be absolutely no shock oh i know what it is yes yeah it's the best performance of john goodman's career yes jeff bridges is someone that we all inspire to be mm-hmm. steve buscemi never knows how to shut the f up yes and it's my favorite coen brothers movie even though fargo is probably the best yeah i mean it's got its own anthology series on fx which we should go back and check that out at some we point we should um but my favorite not best yeah. favorite yeah is the big lebowski yes i uh, got to see this in theater 
theaters the day before my birthday a few years ago, and that was just a really cool thing to be it able to was. experience. It was. Uh, that was the first time you got to really watch it because uh, we watched it at a former friend's house, and you were so uncomfortable there, and yeah. I was so uncomfortable there because yes. we weren't wanted. <laughs> We That's kind of felt, true. It, it was like, a, oh, you overheard about this party. You can come too if you want. It, it was one of those situations. Yeah. And um, we just sat and watched The Big Lebowski. Uh, you weren't really paying attention. You no. were pretty much just on your phone the whole time. Yep. But mm-hmm. this was the first time you actually watched yes. it. It was in yes. the theaters and uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes. Um, and there's nothing like seeing Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers take a bowling ball <laughs> to the balls. Yes. And so many great moments in this movie. Just a perfect capture of that early 90s feel. Yes. A great mystery that really works so well. Yeah. And John Goodman basically playing an old roommate of mine <laughs> is just absolutely perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I love this movie. I could put it on at any time and enjoy it. Yeah. It's hilarious. I, I think my favorite scenes with the movie are the ones involving the ashes. <laughs> yes. At the very end. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Is there uh, a Ralph's nearby? <laughs> Uh, my number one is The Crow. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that's kind of a horror. I, it's, it's horror combined with other things, but it's not straight up horror, so I don't consider it a horror. Um, but it is everything to me. <laughs> like. What do you mean? As he's staring at all of my crow memorabilia. <laughs> I have started quite the collection over the past uh, couple years here. And that's why Sting um, is your favorite wrestler. He, I mean, he's one of yeah. Um, it's a gross Sting. You know, <laughs> you know. Um, but no, I mean, it's it's my favorite comic book character. Um, Eric Draven is just like the best like goth dreamboat ever. Um, I mean, I think you mean antihero. Antihero going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with it, um, so he was a musician who was engaged to the love of his life and they were both murdered and um he comes back to kind of avenge their deaths and um it just it's it's goth it's dark it's deep it's beautiful it has like the romance about it 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 just it's everything it's everything i love it and well most people will probably say ghostbusters one or two this is your favorite ernie hudson movie oh yeah absolutely (laughs) who happens to be a citizen of the town that we live in yes yes (laughs) (laughs) who would have thunk it i know right yeah Uh, but um yeah. How do you feel about them sequels? Mm, no. I mean, yeah, the original one is is the one. I, I'm curious if if the one comes out this year, the new one comes out this year. I'm curious what that's going to be like, but we'll see. I haven't heard a thing about that since the pandemic yeah. was technically gone. Yeah. I mean, I feel like The Crow is so, like, engraved with Brandon Lee at this point. Partially because of, of what happened during the, the filming, but also just because of how amazing he was during it that I don't know that anything could ever live up to that. That. Well, and I've also heard different people were going to be playing Eric Draven as well. Yeah. I've heard Jason Momoa, which makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. I mean, he would have to lose all of his muscle to be able to play. Scratcher. I've heard uh, Bill Skarsgård was going to play the crow, which mm-hmm. makes a little more sense. Yeah. As uh, he is definitely the Clint Howard of the uh, Skarsgård <laughs> family. <laughs> oh. Poor thing. You know it's true. It, it is true. It is true. But um, I, I think if they do the remake, it should be a, a, a no name leader yeah, yeah. or actor because mm-hmm. uh, anyone else, it's just like you're always going to compare him to Brandon Lee. That is true. And if it's a no name or relatively unnamed actor, yeah, you know, it has a chance of becoming the crow of the next generation rather mm-hmm. than just always having to pair yeah. the Brandon Lee. But that's just my humble yeah. opinions. Yeah, the sequels are terrible. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like uh, most uh, comic books sequels. Yeah. They they always end up not being the best. <laughs> I mean, there's obviously exceptions. There's always exceptions, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that was just a good example of that. Yes. That would be a great one of uh, the 10 worst uh, sequels. Oof, yeah. yeah and to me, it'd be like so many of them like uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, you could do with the crows. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, there's so many different ones. So but, many comedy ones, too. Well, those are our top 10 films of all time. And I don't watch foreign movies. I watch foreign films. It's true. You are awesome. But uh, w- what do you think? Uh, did we hit the nail on the head? Did we miss the mark? Uh, any favorite movies of yours? Let us know down below. But before we close with this segment, we have to spin the choice. Yes, we do. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it this time. I'm going right. to go ahead and uh, shuffle. Every day I'm shuff- shuffling. And uh, what are we going to be talking about next week as I spin the choice? Ooh. 
Ooh. Looks like it's going to be metal debuts. All right. Yes. Our favorite heavy metal or heavy metal adjacent albums. Yes. That were the first from a band. Yeah. And we'll be doing our collective top 10 on right. all of that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Me um, too. Yeah. There's a lot brewing in my head already. So mm-hmm. it's going to be exciting to see where things go. Yeah. So make sure to tune in next week for the top 10 metal debuts. So up next in a shocking turn of events. Dun, uh, dun. Dun. We decided to watch the Royal Rumble last night. <gasps> I know. So we haven't, uh, as many of you know, we haven't watched WWE programming in many, many, many a years. Um, and of course, there's there's all the, the news going on this week, as you may have heard earlier in the episode. From VKM. From a VKM. Mick Mahon. And we're like, you know what? Like, we don't have anything else going on tonight. Let's watch this MST and see if there's anything... Like, that's either better as a result of him not being there, even though it's quick turnaround time, or maybe there's some shenanigans that'll happen as a result. Let's just check it out and let's MST this. Yeah, I'm just joking about it in the car as we were doing our travels from yes. comic book store to comic book store. Yes. But we actually decided to do it. We did. It's not like we had any games to finish or start last night. Right, <laughs> right. Although, uh, we did finish one. And you didn't quite start it. another one, though. No. Uh, we'll you, get into that later. We got though. it on Thursday. We'll get into <laughs> it's it later. Sunday, and I still haven't played it yet. Yeah. But um yeah, what's it been? Four years since we've seen something a Royal Rumble? Like, that. like 2020, 2021, something Probably. like that. Probably. Yeah. The last pay-per-view I remember us watching was uh Money in the Bank when Otis won the oh, Money in gosh. the Bank. Yeah. And uh we just kind of decided that you know what, that's it. We're done. <laughs> yep, enough. But with all of that said, um we still have cable. Hopefully that'll change this week. Yeah. And uh we still got Peacock for free. Mm-hmm. So we decided uh F it. Yeah. Don't need to watch the pre- show and uh we watched the royal rumble now there's a lot of pros and a lot of cons yes and not just nick con of wwe <laughs> either uh, but um how do you want to do this do you just want to go through the pay-per-view do you want to go over the pros and cons uh, how do you want to do this i'm open i'm open let's do the pros and cons okay uh the first pro i was just going to be talking about one of my least favorite parts of wrestling yes is the vignettes oh yeah when they just constantly go back and they just show off the stuff from even the last yes one. and it seems like those are for for people who have never watched wrestling before. Yeah. But who is tuning into the Royal Rumble 2024 for the first time? Yeah. And never watching any wrestling pay-per-view before. On Peacock, they do commercials instead of the vignettes. Mm-hmm. Which I will t- heavily take any Dawn soap commercial or... <laughs> Or uh, progressive insurance commercials or anything like that yes. overseeing any more vignettes. 100%. So that was a pro for me. Yes. What was a pro for you? Um, I will say that as far as the Royal Rumble, um, like people uh, taking part in it. Oh, the actual I'm, matches. The actual matches. Like, I'm so used to, number one, there being so many nostalgia acts. Number and two. Godfather, Joint Clown. Yes. IRS. And, <laughs> yes. And number two, so much space being taken up by like tag team partners and stuff and just kind of filling the space as much as they can aside from like a few main people whereas this time both the women's and the men's there was no nostalgia acts at all if there were tag team members it was people who you who were also known as kind of being solo sometimes too and there was so many like nxt people as well which i'm not familiar with any of them at this point except for names i've heard of some of uh, but is yeah, well or, she wasn't or, in it though she just well, walked somebody out but she was there well sure but and I'm she's about, in nxt right but i'm talking about the people in the match <laughs> um it's I, banter when play into it no make me <laughs> um <laughs> well i'm not familiar with them it was just nice seeing them like actually try to build people up because that's one of my complaints with aew right now is like they keep focusing on the same same people all the time and like they only bring in other people to like just look stupid essentially and and lose matches whereas here like a lot of the other people actually were made to look like they were competent compared to other people yeah even if it's the only match where they do look like this because we haven't watched in years yeah I mean, those could be jobbers that were actually, like, uh, getting a strong brawl, yeah. I know. could be, yeah. But um, it, it was really nice to see something like that. Yeah. Another pro for me, four matches. Yes. Two Royal Rumbles, which, you know, both mm-hmm. are over an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had the Universal title, and they had the Intercontinental title. Yes. Everything else was just those four. Yes. And I appreciated that because it actually flew by. Yeah. And it was a four-hour pay-per-view, almost. Mm-hmm. But it flew by faster than any AEW pay-per-view in recent times. Yes. Which I truly appreciated. Absolutely. Yeah. Any more pros? 
I would say, kind of comparing to AEW again, like, I feel like the women were presented way stronger overall than they have been in AEW in quite a while. Well, ever. Um, <laughs> oh. Well, I As mean, someone who used to defend the women's division. <laughs> I know. I know. It's sad. It's sad. But I mean, when you have Julia Hart being the main person Isn't there. Isn't she so great? She's 22 years old and she's just really stepped up to the plates. And, you know, it's just like we've never had a younger champion for the TBS right? champion. And it's, just, it's, it's, it's so great to see how much that TK, she's TK, TK, TK. You, you took too many drugs. <clears throat> um, I mean, yeah. she... Julia Hart, I'm sorry, but she botches things all the time. She looks very weak, like I could push her over with one finger. Thank like, you, Matthew from Botchamania, for pointing out every time that she botches. Yes, <laughs> yes. Whereas, again, and this is just us coming in one night. These people are all new to us, so like we haven't seen like what it's been like on a regular basis. But just judging on last night, it felt like women were presented way stronger. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I enjoyed mm-hmm. as well yeah. is the lack of Kevin Dunn-style camera angles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I it was actually watchable from a visual standpoint yeah instead of just like all these dizzying things were zooming in and out and just constantly mm. like 17 different camera shots in three seconds yes and, like they actually stayed on parts which is absolutely insane to me mm-hmm. because like i feel like kevin dunn inspired the cinematography for elvis <laughs> because that was my biggest problem with the elvis movie was the kevin dunn style camera shots that were yeah. throughout the entire movie yeah this didn't this royal rumble did not have habits and uh at least it did not hurt my eyes watching this one yeah one other good thing i'll say with the royal rumble matches is they're in so many royal rumble matches wwe and aew there's one person that hides outside of the ring that you don't even know is in the match anymore and then they sneak at the very end and like win the match and stuff and that did not happen with either of these matches yeah truly appreciated that yeah and also with the the men's royal rumble they didn't do the same thing where they were fighting on the outside and one eventually fell off at the very end yeah Mm -hmm. no the one that lost mm-hmm. just went over the top rope and yeah. lost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just drawn out to be the Shawn Michaels Royal Rumble 96, <laughs> yes. which they've done every year since. Yes. Yes. Now let's get into the cons. Yes. Because there's plenty of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you start off with this one since I started with the pros. Nia Jax. Nia um, Jax. I mean, just number one, her in particular, because she's a terrible wrestler. She's sloppy. She's injury prone to other people. Like, terrible person. Terrible person. But then also getting into to a, a, another topic regarding her, I hate the portrayal of bigger chick on wrestling. Yes. Like, coming from a bigger chick myself, like... Don't, don't give things... What? You can't give away your description of what you look like. We're a podcast. People don't know what we look like. Um, I I'm think messi- people... I'm messing with you. I'm like, I think your face is <laughs> all out there, buddy. You do videos. I'm just trying to set it up. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, like... <laughs> Don't act like we're Godzilla, okay? We're, we're human beings just like anybody else, first of all. And number two, like, it doesn't take 50 women to push you off over the ring. Like, it's just it's just ridiculous. It's clownery. It's just stupid. Well, as you've seen this year, that didn't even work when all of them tried to. I know. <laughs> she just overpowered them all. And then, like, when it was, like, her versus, um, who was the other, um, gal who was a bit bigger? Uh, oh, Piper Niven. Piper Niven. Like, it's like, oh, Godzilla versus King Kong kind of behavior. Like, don't treat us like circus acts, okay? We're not. But wrestling is a circus act. It started in the carny stuff. Sure, but bigger girls are not circus creatures, and I, I think it's gross. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I'm, I'm not disagreeing. It's disgusting. Yeah. I, I hate that about the women's stuff. Like, the smaller you are, it seems like the more serious you're taken, mm-hmm. and the bigger you are, you're just like Andre the Giant. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's stupid. And you're also given the ugliest outfit. Yeah. Um, A con for me? Yes. Was uh the, the shocking returns uh in the- oh. Oh, yeah. In the at least in the women's rumble, there wasn't really in the men's rumble. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was Andrade came back, yeah. and it's like, well, no kidding. We but, knew uh, that was gonna happen. But uh, yeah, Naomi's back. Uh, of course, at Trinity Fatu in real yes. life. Yes. Yes. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, the star of all of it, mm-hmm. Jade Cargill. Yes. Who um they were originally gonna was have a different last name, but I guess they actually did go with Jade Cargill now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, finally made her debut after signing mm-hmm. with the company like almost a year ago. I know it's been a while. Yeah. And. Uh, she was the one who single-handedly took out Nia Jax. Yes. Doing what 11 other women couldn't do at right. one time. Right. And again, that's the other thing. I hate that kind of stuff. Where, yeah. And of course, they made it seem like she was going to win the whole darn thing. Yeah. And it was mm. actually kind of shocking that she didn't. I was surprised. Like, yeah. And that's probably your con for you for this one. Who I, won the Women's Rumble? Bailey. I can't stand her. What is it about Bailey? That I mean, you don't stand? I don't. I've never liked her character when it was like Bailey and the Buddies and or even 
even now like being like a heel type character she just seems in so, a group called damage control she, she just seems so goony i love that there's a group <laughs> called damage control after everything that's happened this past week with right? wwe yeah they got their work cut out for them <laughs> Oh. But yeah, I, I, I don't care for her. Uh, another con for me. Uh, I know we've been heavily hitting uh, all the women. Yeah. And I'm not going to stop here. Mm -hmm. The ring announcer for WWE oh, is one Lord. of the most shrill voices I've heard in quite some time. That was horrible. <laughs> I, I pointed this out last night and you got a good giggle out of it. Yes. To me, her voice is what Christina Aguilera sounds like to people who don't like Christina Aguilera. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Oh, uh, another count for you. Ah, uh, CM Punk. CM Punk in general. Yeah, yeah, just him being anywhere. Like after the things that he has pulled, like he's just kind of grossed me now. But you gotta be happy he didn't win. And that I am happy about. Yeah. Mm, I I'm, mean, I'm amazed he didn't, because yeah. I figured he would have like conned his way into that or something. But well, he he must be facing Seth Rollins then for the title because yeah. uh, the winner of the men's rumble was Cody Rhodes. Yes. And he is gonna supposedly be facing Roman Reigns, although I feel like. Like the rock's gonna be thrown in there in some way shape form because mm. of course it is yes so i think it's gonna be cm punk versus seth rollins okay. for the wwe title that makes sense that makes sense just my thinking yeah uh, another con for me uh, a con man if you will logan paul oh yeah, yeah yeah i despise that little thing yes there's so many derogatory names i want to call him mm -hmm. uh from what he did with suicide forest and a youtube video to uh scamming people with cryptocurrency stuff to just his overall personality and his brother jake all i hate both of them yes uh apparently he's been intercontinental champion for like almost 100 days or something like that and uh considering he also just re-signed with wwe yeah uh, i can't imagine he's gonna be losing that title anytime soon and it brings mm -hmm. in the young kids as well because he's so beloved to the young youtube community <laughs> and kevin owens had to lose to him yeah w what did he do yeah i don't i didn't like that he should have kept he should have won and actually won yeah like kevin owens and Sami Zayn are just treated as afterthoughts which is another con of mine as well Absolutely. i just i hate that because those are my two favorites from wwe yeah and they're just traded as mm -hmm. any more uh not that i can think of well i can go into one more okay for the men's rumble yeah <clears throat> omos oh yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. again like you mentioned with bigger gals mm -hmm. i think of with very tall men yeah although they're presented as being these big unstoppable people yeah when in reality all they can do is body slams and chops yeah because they can't fit physically move like that mm -hmm. because they're so freaking tall yeah and they're presented like they can do anything yeah and, oh and one more uh, now that i think about it because of omos mm -hmm. pat mcafee oh yeah yeah taking up a spot that anyone else could have had in yeah. the royal rumble which well I, i'm pretty sure it was because that would have been brock lesnar's spot but he pulled out because quote unquote he won't support wwe if vince is not a part of it <laughs> But um, uh, he's just enjoying some water sports instead. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, but yeah, he just went up on the apron, went in, looked at Omos, jumped out. Yeah. Went back in, jumped out. Yeah. Eliminated himself. Yep. That was it. Yep. I mean, it was a bit of, I, I get if they couldn't find anybody else to come do it on short notice. Mm -hmm. It was a bit of humor, but I think it's lame that a spot was used up for that, but whatever. And one more pro, because uh, you mentioned truth. I have R -Truth. to mention our truth Yes. He came in during the Women's Royal Rumble because because he thought it was the men's Royal Rumble. Yes, yes. And if you notice, he actually came in at the same number for the men's Royal Rumble at number 24. <laughs> Oh. Well, he is a joke, but it's a funny joke to me. Yeah, he's humorous at least, you know. I might not like him as a wrestler, and, yeah. and he was a lackey for Vince McMahon behind the scenes. Yeah. But I still giggles out of him. Yeah. So overall, what was your impressions of Royal Rumble? Not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, I think part of it was that it was kind of shiny new and new in a way, because there were so many people that I wasn't familiar with. Uh, so there's there's that. But then, you know, like we talked about some of the, the pros and stuff, it did really help it out, I feel like. Um, and, and also coming off of some pretty crummy AEW pay-per-views, um, it, it was like, oh, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. So what's going on for the future then? I don't know. I mean, you know, the plus side with WWE, we don't have to pay for any of the pay-per-views because we have Peacock. Well, so. even if we get rid of cable, we're going to be paying for Peacock. Yeah, because that's where I watch all my reality stuff. So And all the Bloomhouse movies end up on there. That's true. That's true. Which is another cost-saving uh, uh, measure for us. It uh, is. Instead of, <laughs> uh, I know it's a sidebar. Yeah. Uh, 
movie theater prices, especially on concessions, has skyrocketed in it our area. It is. And um, just two tickets and a meal of food each is like 80 bucks now. Yeah. Uh-huh. So um, if there's anything that's going to be coming immediately to one of our streaming services that we uh-huh. use, like the Bloomhouse Horror Movies, yeah. we can wait a few weeks until it's on Peacock. Yeah. 824 yeah. films are now going to be on Max. Yeah. So we can wait on them as well. Yeah. I know it's not the grand visual experience of being in a movie theater with those really comfy chairs and right. really, really good food. Yeah. Because they had the up the food game mm-hmm. over the years. Some people would actually come exactly. into the movie theaters, <laughs> uh, especially Alamo Draft House, which is yes. just... But we were even thinking of going to see a movie yeah. yesterday, and we decided against it because we knew how much it was going to cost we us. We spent our money on comics instead. <laughs> and th- we get to keep those all the time. Exactly. That's why I love buying games, because you can yes. play those anytime you want to. Yes. It's not just a one-time experience. Exactly. But, but uh, uh, yeah, going back to like future with WWE, yeah. I mean, I, I, I certainly would not start watching the television programming, but, you know, on nights of pay-per-views or even the NXT pay-per-views, like, if we're not doing Next anything Sunday. else. Yeah, if we're not doing anything else, hey, let's throw it on. Yeah, we gotta have some kind of wrestling content in here. We, exactly. We advertise wrestling content. Exactly, so. exactly. And of course, WrestleMania fi- uh, is 50? Yeah, WrestleMania 50 is Jeez. coming up. Yeah. And of course, it's in uh, the greatest city in the world, Philadelphia Freedom. freedom. Which I didn't da, know that was by da, Elton da, John. Da, da. <laughs> Um, we might just watch both nights. Maybe. Just yeah. for the poos and giggles. That's free. It's free for us right yeah, now. so why not? Or it's 10 bucks with all of the Bravo shows that you watch. Exactly. So, so. you know, it's 10 bucks compared to other things. So yes, yeah. It, it, we could do worse. We could do worse. And maybe we'll get to the point where we cover both AEW and WWE. Maybe. Maybe we won't. Maybe yeah. we'll just be done with wrestling <laughs> in general. <laughs> like, oh. we completely missed Wrestle Dream yeah. in the beginning of the month. We completely uh-huh. missed it and we used to stay up to I would wake you up at 2 a.m. so yes, we could watch Russell I know uh, uh, Russell Kingdom yes, yes yeah I said Russell yeah now, but the, yeah Russell Kingdom completely missed out on it mm-hmm, yep uh, the TNA pay-per-views we haven't watched no. uh, the Ring of Honor pay-per-views we haven't watched no. well um, the fact that the Ring of Honor ones are like the same price as the AEW ones and stuff well no 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 oh they're not if I you get the were... app it's 10 bucks a month or well, 10 that's... bucks a month if you watch it six weeks after yeah well <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um GCW we haven't watched that in like two years no well, the last one was at the hammerstein ballroom that was the last one that we Oof, watched yeah but um you know we i think we need to have some kind of wrestling content at yeah. least for a little while longer yeah maybe we'll demolish the whole thing who knows Let's see what happens but uh right now things are possible now we kind of did things um backwards here because uh usually the wrestling is a part of the things where we've enjoyed this past week segment that we do but We figured with the actually coming back to WWE for the first time in like four years, that deserved its own little segment. But here is the stuff we're enjoying over the past week. Good news, everyone! It's time to let you know what we've been enjoying. Don't you have some friends your own age? Someone to drink with? Maybe a girlfriend? Talking about TV, movies, video games, wrestling, even music. Can't you see you're not making rock and roll better? You're just making rock and roll worse. So up first, uh, a couple games we've been playing over the past week. Uh, you've been playing the Terminator. Yes, Terminator Resistance, which is made by the same company who made RoboCop Rogue City. Mm-hmm. And it was such a quinketing yesterday when I found yes. the uh, Terminator RoboCop series <laughs> in, in comics. One through three, and again, I have to look for four. Yes. I uh, wish they would have had four there, but regardless. Yeah. Um, I, I really enjoy both games so much. They're in first person, and uh, you're basically in the world of Terminator for Terminator Resistance. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, I mean, there's no Arnold Schwarzenegger in this. Yeah. I mean, they couldn't afford him. It was <laughs> a, it's course. a small, it's a small company. Of yeah. course, they weren't gonna yeah, be able yeah. to. But um, it's in the world, and you get to kill all these T1000s and T800s and all these uh, crazy Terminators from Skynet. And everyone thinks we're living in the world of Skynet right now right. because of artificial intelligence. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it's totally done the same way. Exactly. Yeah. Get AI to dry hands right, and then we'll be able to talk. <laughs> right. <laughs> When they don't have seven thumbs on one hand or something. <laughs> but um, no, just a, it got it for 20 bucks on sale on PlayStation Store. And mm-hmm. uh, it was like a 20 hour game for me. Yeah, the way I was that's playing it. Uh, uh, finishing up the DLC as well. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should play that first before I go into the next game that I'll be playing. I yeah. don't know yet. Yeah. But um, uh, both games, Robocop, Rogue City, and Terminator Resistance, both really fun games, if yeah. especially if you enjoy the franchise. Yeah. Outside of that, we also played Last of Us 2. Yes, Last of Us Part 2. Yeah. 
Yes. Remastered. Remastered. Yes. The $10 upgrade, as we talked about on last week's show. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so happy that we got it. Yeah. Um, I love the PS4 version. Yeah. But wow, the PS5 version is much more vivid. Mm-hmm. And I don't just mean with the landscapes and the color and stuff like that. Yeah. Things are much more brutal. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like uh, the, the kill scenes are much more brutal <laughs> and... Uh, and vivid and everything. It's just like, it, it was so great to see that. And we might be the only two people on Earth that yeah. feel that part two is better than part one. I know, I know. But. But it is. But it is. <laughs> and it was just fun going back through that. So I played through it the whole week. Mm-hmm. And yeah, from like Sunday to almost Sunday. Yeah, I only wrapped it up in the wee hours last night. Yeah, almost before midnight. Yes. We, we finished that up. And mm-hmm. I was so happy that we did. Like, it's our January thing to go back and play The Last of Us 1 and 2. It is, it is. Uh, mainly because the show started in january last year so Mm -hmm. it's our yearly tradition that we do this and we'll be doing it again in january of course hopefully the remake of part one will be an actual decent price instead of 50 bucks that would be nice or 70 bucks sometimes yeah uh of course uh playing the version that we already had yes which was the second game that i picked up for the ps4 because i heard so many good things about the last of us yeah um i remember the first time we played that you couldn't have cared less (laughs) and now it's like you're one of your favorite video game franchises oh absolutely yeah Mm -hmm. And finally, back on Thursday night, you purchased Like a Dragon. No, oh, no, we had some more Last of Us stuff to talk about. Oh, did we? Oh, oh we did, right. We have a couple of debates to talk about. Yes, we do. My apologies. Now, again, we already talked about the first one, about which one's better, one or two. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, We're going to, um, an unanswerable question here. Yes. Abby or Ellie, Uh, who was the better hero in the game? I don't think either one of them are heroes. Which one's more of a villain? I don't think either one are villains either. You think they're just people? They're anti-heroes. I think, again... <laughs> Why, I he is shaking his head at me. <laughs> it's an inside joke. It's an yes, inside it joke. is. It is. But no, I think Ellie is the bigger villain. Okay. Again, the very last encounter that you see between Ellie and a- Abby yeah. establishes that Ellie is the worst character. I'm not saying like she sucks as a character. I'm saying that uh, she's more evil. She is more vengeance filled. She is more of all of these things. Because okay. look at everything that she did just to try to get that last bit of vengeance in there. Yeah. And how Abby wanted nothing to do with it anymore despite threatening it again if she ever saw her again and what she almost did to Lev yeah that it's despicable but I feel like Abby did the same stuff and she held on to this grudge trying to find Joel for her, well, uh, half of her life I, I can't remember was she 19 in the second one I think 19 so probably 7 years or how many years it was, was 5 it? years oh it was 5 years okay yeah yeah for 5 full years and like like did not let go of this for 5 years like she's just as bad and she hunted down Ellie twice and she killed Ellie's friends and family and she almost killed um Ina Ina yeah Yeah. (laughs) um she did a lot of terrible things too if if you've checked out The Last of Us Part 2 who are your what are your feelings between Mm -hmm. Abby and Ellie please let us know yes but now um (sighs) This is going to be a two-part thing. You don't know okay. that I'm going to do this. Oh, okay. But um, it is on the subject that you think it's about. Okay. Now, I asked you since Sunday. Yes. Who is the bigger heartthrob? Yes. The one that you would want to be with? Yes. Is it Jesse or is it Nanny? Yes. Now, there's pros and cons for at least one of them. I mean, I'm not sure if there's really cons for yeah. the other one. Maybe yeah. there is. I yeah. You don't really know. Mm-hmm. But um, I asked you then and you haven't been able to come up with an answer since. Right. But I'm going to ask you now. Yes. Jesse or Nanny? Oh. <sighs> And explain your reasonings. Jesse. Jesse! Yeah. Okay. So, with Manny, like, he ha- he has that swagger that I like, you know, he's a, swagger he's a rough Nick boy. Jack. He's a rough boy that I could, I could change him. I could change him. But there's some really, like, disrespectful things that he did that I find it hard to get over. And, you know, in, in a world like that, how much could I actually change him? <laughs> well, you can't change anybody in that world. Yeah. Um. Whereas with Jesse, like, he just seems like a good guy, you know? I, I would prefer, like no no baby with Dina but <laughs> assuming no baby with Dina then I would choose Jesse for sure so are um, you saying if I would have had a baby before we met you wouldn't have been interested eh, maybe we'll see oh, we'll, we'll see, see. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're gonna get back in the DeLorean and go back to 2013 or, or, or even earlier than that I don't know I don't know regardless so I don't need the drama on the side with that um but but he just seems like a much like I, I would feel safer with him I feel I would feel like I'd have more a resemblance of a normal life with him, normal quote unquote, than I would with um uh um Manny. Manny, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So the part two to this is yes. an F Mary Hill. Okay. 
Jesse. Okay. Manny. Okay. Tommy. Oh! <laughs> you scoundrel, you. Oh, she wants to call me something much worse. <sighs> F. Mary Kill. <sighs> I am going to marry, I'm going to marry Tommy. I'm going to F Jesse and I'm going to kill Manny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did not think it was going to go that direction. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. You? Uh, replace, um, I'd end up with Jesse. Yeah. Uh, marrying Jesse. Okay. Yes. A straight man marrying Jesse. Yes. Another straight man. Yes. Uh, I would kill Tommy. Okay. Especially for his last actions in the last part of the game. I don't like, He just yeah. became a bitter old man. Yeah. I don't like that piece, but everything else about him, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, like I could marry him. And of course, I'm going to F the ass out of Manny because he would give me a really good time. <laughs> <laughs> With a straight face right there. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, when you're after the apocalypse, can you really be choosy? So Jesse or Manny then for you? Oh, Jesse. Okay. Just want to make sure. Because I, I would marry Jesse because yeah. he could well, also yeah. do all that stuff. Yeah. But I would also have someone who seems like you would actually care much more about me. Sure. Yeah. Instead of uh, just uh, going off and uh, hitting all the side pieces mm -hmm. and stuff. Exactly. I mean, maybe you'd have to be an open marriage. Yeah. Uh, you know, just to have someone like Manny who has military training and mm -hmm. that swagger, like Jagger. Yeah, to yeah. To quote a question, Kesha song. Yes. Was that Kesha? Or why not? I, I, maybe it's better. I don't remember. Who but, knows? Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's how I do. Yes. Now, finally. Now, getting back to it. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, like a dragon. Yes. Infinite will. Yes. Also known as Yakuza 8, if you want to look at it that way. Mm -hmm. The story of Ichiban and Kiru, um, mo mostly taking place in Honolulu, Hawaii. Yes. And not in the dirty streets of Tokyo mm -hmm. and other places in Japan like it's been for every other Yakuza one. This is the first one that takes place out of Japan and it's Americanized. Yes. Uh, it's a uh, full English uh, language, voice acting, all that stuff. So people who aren't really into reading subtitles or not really into the Japanese voiceovers and stuff, this is a game that you could actually enjoy eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have not played it yet because <laughs> of all the stuff over the past week and mm -hmm. finishing Last of Us 2 and then the I'm watching the Royal Rumble instead of starting that and uh, I might even go and play uh, the DLC for Terminator Resistance and finish that up before I get into Infinite Wealth. There's so many things that'll go potentially into all that stuff but I have been looking forward to this for so long. Um, I know all of the rumors, theories and spoilers are out there on the internet. Thankfully I haven't seen a one. Yeah. And I'm so happy about that. Uh, the main story supposedly takes about 70 hours so um, when you're off on your little excursion uh, yeah. Yes. The week after. Yes. Um, I might not feel as lonely. Yeah. For those days, so mm -hmm. I'll be actually able to um, lose myself in the island of Honolulu and stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, very excited to play it. Um, your man Danny Trejo's in it. Yes. So who knows? Maybe you'll be interested in this for yeah. once. Um, of course, uh, all the Like a Dragon and Yakuza games have. It's a very serious story. Mace. Yeah. And the seriousness is wrapped around all of this wackiness that is just so crazy. Mm -hmm. Like walking into uh, a Yakuza den and uh, all these men have a kink fetish for wearing diapers and you have to pick <laughs> them up. Um, I saw in parts of the commercial for Infinite Wealth, you can get dolphins to help you beat up guys. Nice. <laughs> Just like all this stuff. There's mm -hmm. a little uh, taxi driver or a uh, crazy taxi type mini game in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited to try that out. Yeah. And you can play classic Sega games. Uh, so many different things in there and I can't wait to try all of that. And yeah. uh, maybe, you'll, maybe you'll watch some of it. I don't oh know. yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah. Chopping at the bit for that. Uh, moving over to music. We've checked out a few new things over the past week. Uh, first up, we check out the new single from Bruce Dickinson. Yes. Rain on the Grave. Yes. And being the lead Bruce Dickinson fan in this household. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, what did you think of this one? Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, it's like he, like he thinks he's people. Um. <laughs> What is that? I, you can tell that he really thinks he's doing something so cinematic and creative and amazing and stuff. And it's just complete doo-doo. He is not this this untouchable, amazing thing that everybody seems to think he is and or that he thinks he is. And it's just cheesy and stupid. And what's one of our favorite lines like we like to say? Just because you were first doesn't mean you're yes, best. exactly. And uh, you won't be able to really get the visual of this, but I will try to do it audio wise yes in my left hand is bruce dickinson's butthole <laughs> in the right hand it is bruce dickinson himself now here is bruce dickinson going up his own butthole <laughs> <laughs> he is so full of himself that yes. he can taste himself yes 
And I get that the mo- the the music video was supposed to be like this cheesy hammer horror yeah. style thing, but it's done so crappily. <laughs> I just, I can't enjoy it. No. His solo no. work, I do not enjoy. Yeah. And this is just another example of why I don't enjoy Bruce Dickinson's solo work. Yes. It's, oh. I mean, he's just trying to be this prestigious guy, and it just comes off as pompous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And no, just no. 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 <laughs> uh, we also checked out the new single from Sonata Arctica. Yes. And as the resident Sonata fan. And that, that is <laughs> true. That is actually true for this Even one. Even though I do enjoy Sonata as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say... I it was definitely better than some of the songs I've heard from some of their albums of the past well gosh 10 plus 15 years at this Getting point near 20 yeah um it just it just doesn't have the magic of like the first four Sonata albums like I don't know if they can ever recapture that I don't know if it's because there's just yeah, almost an entire well there's that uh it's so many different members of the band now Tony's just off on his little own whimsical journey Tony Kako um but it's I mean it's definitely better but it's it just doesn't have that magic for me so eh, we'll yeah, see it's it's fine yeah they tried yeah but i don't see myself going back to it yeah mm-hmm. uh and we also checked out the new single from crimson glory yes um as the resident crimson glory yes. fan here <laughs> um i really do like the new vocals yeah um obviously it's not midnight mm-hmm. it's not toddler tour mm-hmm. but i do enjoy the vocal range that's going on here yeah. can he hit the full settles of midnight maybe another single will show that off yeah. I don't think this was the song to start off showing the new era of Grimson Glory. Yeah. Yep. It just, it felt like something was lacking in it. Yeah. And it feels like a good song in the album sense, mm-hmm. but not a single. 100%. Yeah. That it almost just... makes me wish I would have waited for the album. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I felt the same way. Like, it, it just felt very reserved and not as, like, bold as you would you would assume they would put out for a first single, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I want to see what's coming up next from them. I'm, I want to check yeah. out the album. Album. I would love to do an interview if that was possible, but yeah. uh, I just I want to see where it goes. Exactly. Outside of that, uh, you put up the video for January. Yes. Um, it's part of my weekly series, but I started off uh, recapturing all of January 2024 with a, with a series I called Out Today and What I Miss, or mm-hmm. Autumn Whim, if you want to <laughs> I like if you it. want to do it that way. Um, I covered 17 albums on this, mm-hmm. and it took a lot out of me to do all of this, but yes. um, it seems to be paying off. Yeah. I've been doing the YouTube shorts, and that's been getting like hundreds upon hundreds of views. Mm-hmm. Um, the one where I do all of them together, I, I tried to make it very funny yeah. in there as well, too, like adding clips and stuff like that. So anyone who's checked out the long version of it, I hope you enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to do this very, very brief. Yes. Um, if you want to know my thoughts on this, check out the videos yes um but we're here for the metal fairy and her thoughts <laughs> on these now she doesn't really remember the names of any of these no i in numbers. fact yeah she just put numbers so uh, the first one is abhoria with deaths which um, is uh more um apocalyptic death metal black and death mm-hmm. metal kind of stuff yes i put no harsh <laughs> explain that for people <laughs> i get it no but you explain it. no meaning it's not my cup of tea and harsh meaning it just it was just a little too harsh for me like just a little too uh, aggressive. Which is weird because some of your favorite bands are very aggressive. Yeah, but usually mixed with more cleanliness and stuff mm-hmm. too. Alright, number two is uh, Ancient Wisdom with Sold My Soul to Satan, the band's first album since 2019. A little bit, bit of a mix of everything for Ancient Stone. Yeah, yeah. Um, This one I had already heard before. I, well, I, you heard a song. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I love Ancient Wisdom. Yeah, I enjoyed this song. Um, Not my favorite from them so far, but um, it, it's still good. Still good. You yeah. need to check out the whole album. Yes, that I need to. And it's good for them because they always stick to around like a half hour so it doesn't waste too much of your time. It's true. <laughs> uh, number three you got Polygula's Horse with their sixth album The Storm Chaser. Er, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was reading the single because I put that all together on Spotify. Oh yeah. Charcoal Grace. Yes. Um, so for this one, I I got almost kind of a Daniel Gildenlow kind of vibe from them. Which where, means? Which means like like they're proggy, but they're like too cool for a school at the same time. And like they probably lived in, live in like some cool artsy loft where they have chicks back at their place all the time. And like... Yes, because all the prog nerds are the ones getting chicks. <sighs> By the mood of this song, you would think they would. And they probably do like tantric stuff like Sting and like... I just... I, I didn't. 
I, good one. I, 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 I didn't dislike it, but I just don't know if I fit in with it. But you could. I? You could. Could I, though? No. Once you try it, uh, you never know. I mean, maybe. maybe if I start doing yoga. Maybe. Yeah. PDP yoga. Yes. Uh, next up, we got Cognizance, Fantasine. Um, I uh, was not into this. Um. Oh, you just. You didn't put anything, did you? I can't read what I wrote. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> even better i told you that was gonna happen i know i know that's what happens when you write in the dark and you just make chicken scratches to be fair we're also recording in the dark hey, don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm joking yes um yeah this is um i guess i'll explain it a little yeah. bit uh, like a tech death a little bit of a melodic death metal death core kind of stuff um sometimes it gets very very technical sometimes it gets very brutal sometimes it gets a little brighter at times i put jarring that jarring. reminded me okay. okay yeah that makes sense and that's probably why because there's some genre shifting going on yeah up. From, mm-hmm. from bit of. Yes. Uh, next up is Disconnected Souls with their debut LP Fragments of Consciousness. Mm-hmm. This one I like. Um, very kind of a gothy mix, uh, but kind of refrained at the same time though. But I, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. I also think this is one that if you check out the full album, your mm-hmm. opinions might kind of change. Yeah. For better or for worse. Yeah. Um, the reservation is not throughout Tyrell. Okay. Uh, next up we got Domination Campaign with their album A Storm of Steel. Uh, I did not enjoy this. I found it a Oh, uh, I mean, that tends to happen in death metal. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should probably back grab all these as well. Um, Fragments of Lost Memories is next with Yakusoku, or uh, in English, it is Promise, of uh, Funeral Doom Metal. This one I did not enjoy either. I, it, it just left me feeling nothing. I put, it, it just kind of... Bleh. And I'm also remembering why I wanted to do this weekly, so when we go over all this stuff, we can get your thoughts on all these new albums and yes. stuff like that. Yes. Um, next up, uh, one of my favorite albums of the, of the year so far, one of do the funeral procession with instill silence uh progressive death metal out of dallas texas for this <laughs> one i really like the clean part but i didn't like the harsh part mm. it just short and sweet just <laughs> you saw we were keeping it short <laughs> no i was keeping it short and sweet oh. because oh. <laughs> i was saying that if you wanted to hear my opinion go check out the videos <laughs> I want your opinions. On okay, this. well, I'll keep this in mind going forward. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yours give as much description as you can. Yeah. For me, people can check it out because they yes. already had a couple days that, to check them true, out. That's true. That's true. Some of these I don't have much more details, but I, in future weeks, I'll try to give more okay. details. Well, I like the funeral procession, and they have been uh, checking out my stuff and enjoying what I've been doing lately, and uh, they've been promoting me pretty well yeah. on their page. Social oh, good. Media pages, so good. I'm very good. happy about that. Yeah. Uh, next up is uh, Fushit with Bury Me Here. Uh, more of the uh, ambience raw black days metal. I thought this was gross. It reminded me of screeching an H-E double hockey stick and it just it, ooh, yeah, no. So it did exactly what it was supposed to. Yes. And that's why I like it. There you go. Uh, next up is Lucid Funeral with Terminal Lucidity. Uh, another debut album for uh, progressive death metal, a little bit of doom metal. And considering the whole band is like in their late teens, early 20s, I was heavily oh, impressed by this. Yeah. Um, I like the feeling of this song, but I, I I felt like it was still kind of jarring for me and I also felt like the vocals were very unclear so it was hard to like I can also say that might be because of the mix that could be um, that could be I know they were really trying to capture that 90s progressive death metal sound and mm-hmm. they didn't have the best mix back then gotcha I gotcha uh, next up is Lucifer with Lucifer 5 uh, not V as uh, <laughs> Banger TV tried to point it out and uh, <laughs> all their glaring spelling mistakes that they had throughout the video for this one yeah but um, the fifth album from the uh, uh, doom metal and a cult rock band. Yes. Um, I like this one. It's very moody. I do feel like this could be more like mood music for me though, but I, yeah, I like it. Uh, what'd you think when you heard like the sample clips from Banga? Um, I can't remember honestly. Well, you, well I remember you told me you kind of got like a Mike Shanker. Oh, vibe. okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. I was thinking of something else. Um, yeah, I definitely got a Michael Shanker vibe from like the guitar and the, and the overall feel of the music. Um, but then of course like kind of mixing that with more kind of like not really gothy, but kind of the moody just. Oh, it's gothy. Gothy in a way. Yeah. Yeah, gothy kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I love me some Michael Jaker, so. Yes. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Mega Colossus Showdown. Some more traditional American heavy metal with that new wave of British heavy metal feel. And two ex members of Bloody Hammers. Yes. I really like this one. This is probably my favorite from your list. Um, oh, wow. Uh, okay. Kind of a little bit of power metal in there, too, I yeah. would say, but that heavy metal just kind of uh, make you shake your tush kind of music. Yeah, that's what they do down in North Carolina. Uh-huh. Uh, next up is Morning Dawn with the Foam of Despair. Uh, some blackened 
doomed and avant-garde style metal. I did not like this. I found it to be very drab. That's the point. Uh, well, not for me. It's not. Drab Majesty is uh, one of uh, Kyle's favorites. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up is Rib Spreader with Rip Humanity featuring two members of Necromancing the Stone. Oh. Yeah, I didn't like this one either. Again, I, it was just too harsh for me. I don't know. Classic 90s death metal sound that I yeah. love so much. I know, but I, I like melodic death. <laughs> like, mm. not just straight up death. There's moments of melody in there. Yeah. Uh, next up, another one for you, probably taking the silver place here, mm -hmm. is uh, Russell Guns with their debut uh, uh, debut album Medusa. Yes, I absolutely love this. Um, yeah, it, well, this one was probably tied with that other one. Um, it, it's so good. It's so good and not what you'd expect from 80s acts because most of the CDs that um, any of the bands from the 80s or culminations of bands from the 80s that I've put out in recent years just does not sound good for the most part. Um, but this is good. It's catchy. It's good. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it's a throwback to the 80s. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I appreciate that Absolutely. Uh, next up is the band Santa Cruz from Barcelona. Uh, I cannot pronounce their album, but I did do the English translation of Songs of Love, Grief, and Longing. Uh, more doom gaze, uh, post metal style stuff. I did not like this. It, it felt to me like there wasn't even like a song there. It was just kind of noise. You didn't, you didn't check it out long enough for it to actually kick in. Well, then you didn't play it for me then. Well, I did. I played like four minutes of a nine minute song. And there was nothing there. Regardless, uh, next up and the last one is actually uh, tied as well for me for my uh, album of the month and album of the year so far. I uh, was Scale and Traversing the Bila. Uh, progressive post metal here. Um, the way to describe it is kind of like uh, Borknagar meets Devin Townsend meets Sayor. Like, it's like folkish, mm. progressive, almost black metal, but all clean vaults. Yeah. I thought it was catchy, but there was something about, like, the pace of it, the rhythm of it that was just anxiety inducing for me, and I don't know why, but it was. But it was catchy. It was catchy, though. I think there's other songs that you would thoroughly enjoy on this That one. could be. That could be. Like, uh, the one that I put up for the song of the day, mm -hmm. um, you might actually really enjoy that one. Yeah. It, it doesn't have that frantic kind of feel okay. behind it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, maybe, maybe not. We'll maybe. see. Yeah. Uh, but those are all the albums that I've reviewed up on YouTube and heavydebriefings.weebly.com. And of course, again, reminding you and reminding you that um, <laughs> when we do this going forward on the show, I'm going to keep my thoughts very, very brief. And we're going to be doing the Metal Fairies, hopefully a little more in-depth thoughts of songs off of all these albums. When he said the second you, he was talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm not sure if anyone would have caught that. <laughs> There was no way in my voice that anyone would have caught that. <laughs> But yes, next week I already got a, a big slate of albums to be able to check out. My goal is to get six albums a week, be it stuff that I missed in the past or brand new albums. And next week has some real, or this coming week has some really good albums coming up on it. So yeah. we'll see what happens there. And yeah. again, I really, really want your thoughts on these. Yeah. Not just, I didn't like it or it was fine. Meh. You know, you need to go a little bit deeper. Meh. People love your comments. They love your commentary. I mean, I am pretty great. I, what do you think? I'm with you. Desperation. No, that's you to me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to be alone. That's why you're with me. <laughs> No one wants to be alone. <laughs> Anyways, before we get off track here, uh, I got some food I gotta eat. The Metal Fairy's got the same food to eat, so we gotta warm it up in the our good old air fryer. Yes, we are one of those couples. And we need to close out the show, so thank you so very much for tuning in to episode 29 of the Heavy Debriefings podcast, which will be entitled No Chance in Hell. If you get the reference, you can be a friend. If you don't get the reference, uh, just look up No Chance in Hell wrestling and uh, you'll get the idea of why I did this. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for tuning in and for the, the Metal Fairy. Uh, this is Josh Runquist saying, Embrace the Skullet.